We are live. Hey, everybody. Oh, my God. It's my first live stream, Mike. Look who's here. He didn't even let me introduce him. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Chad. Chad's back in Dumaguete. He heard about all the drama, and he decided to come down and check it out himself. Yeah. <laughs> Just joking, I avoid guys. that. Just joking, guys. So let's uh, let's see who's in the house. Everybody say hello to Chad, and then we'll get on with the topic of the day. We're gonna <laughs> put... like, where's Janet? No, <laughs> who's this guy? No, Janet. bring me Janet. No, Janet today. She does her own live streams. Mike feeds me. I feed him. That was part of the deal. He giving me cookies and coffee. We're going to put him on the hot seat today, guys. Let's see. Hey, Mike and Janet. Yeah, no Janet today, but sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we know Mike never starts on time. <laughs> Nine oh two, guy. I'm just two minutes late. Uh, Ted, chicken legs. All you guys saying hello to each other. Uh, hello for me. Janet said hello. Good morning, Mike, Janet, and Chad from Michael. Is it Janet? Janet's tuning in. She, she somewhere else. Somewhere. Who knows where Janet lurks? She went to drop off laundry today. Uh, we're leaving tomorrow, go back up to Cebu, collect all our belongings, and come back. A very short trip. Bye bye, uh, Cebu, eh? Yeah, our our uh, lease is up. I want to collect my security deposit, give the key back, pay my final electric bill, that kind of stuff. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Duma. Yeah, beautiful day today. A little rain out there. Mm -mm. Not too bad. Yesterday we had some. No, the day before we had some rain. Sorry for eating, guys. I'm we have to feed him. You know, I have this deal. You know, he said he will work for food or video for food. And Janice not here to cook, so I gave him cookies. <laughs> Mike's got a meal. <laughs> PJ's cookies. PJ's out there mad. Who took my cookies? Let's see. Dave's here. Ju K is here. Mosquito guy is here. Uh, John, good morning. Just watching your latest video. Absolutely great one. Thank you, John. Yeah, I was very proud of that video. Uh, it took me quite a while to put it together. Mike's been stepping up his game. I don't know if you've been noticing that. The thumbnails. Back in Dumaguete, Cebu sort of sucked as a place to uh, do videos from. It was yeah. very, very noisy, very crowded, and, and the same thing over That's and over true. again. It's hard to find a quiet place, yeah. yeah. And we, we like it down by the ocean. What happened at Fight Club stays in Fight Club. That's right. And we're not going to talk about that fight. There's another fight, though. I chatted with Janet this morning. You did, Mike. Where was I? Should I be worried about this? No, I know. She was, <laughs> I think she was live for a few minutes uh, this morning. Are you Chad Pitt of the yeah, Philippines? That's me. <laughs> Not quite. Someone did. Uh, oh, our friend. Is that really a thing? Wilma and Greg did a video. The Brad Pitt of the Philippines. This is oh. Chad Pitt. Mm. And definitely. There is a Chad Pitt of the Philippines channel. Definitely not. There might be a Chad Pitt, but this is Chad Foster Explorers. Let's see here. We got Turbo Chris Morning, guys. And Chad, what did you find out in the investigation in Duma? Investigation. Well, mm. I, th I think you found that you're checking out of your hotel and going diving. What's your yeah. plans here in Duma? Since they asked, what, yeah, what I'm, back, I'm here till the 29th. Um, I'm going to get as much snorkeling in as I can. Going to Apple Island tomorrow. Going to go to a hotel in Dowin, snorkel every day, and edit in between. Are you about it? Are you a big snorkeler? I want to be. <laughs> you are. Have you snorkeled before? Yeah. No, I've done a fair amount of snorkeling, but I haven't done much since I've been in Dumont. I've been here a few months, and so I want to squeeze in a bunch of it before I head on the road. Go to heading Apple. on an adventure coming up. Going up to Apple Island, uh, yeah. land of turtles. I understand they have a ton of turtles yeah. out there. Yeah. So um, that should be good. How are you finding Duma on this trip? You know, it's, it's on this trip. Yeah. I mean, well, this, I just got back yesterday. Just, but I love Duma. There's a lot that I haven't done, and uh, I'm going to pack in a bunch of stuff in the next week. Check out a few more waterfalls, do some snorkeling. Now we're going to we're going to go ahead and put them on the hot seat here. 
I, I ride a motorbike from Cebu to Dumaguete and vice versa quite often. Mm -hmm. You did it. How was the trip? And am I a fool for doing that? No, you're not a fool for doing it. I, I took the wrong route. So from Duma to Cebu, there's two ways you can go on either side of the island. I went on like the Oslop side and it's it's brutal. It's brutal. I didn't like it. There's tons of potholes. You're competing with like huge trucks half the time. That's you're the either thing. stuck behind a truck with exhaust and then you like try to find a, a time to pass. And there's definitely times where... I'm like, I wish I was just on CQ or, you know, riding. Around yeah. where there's like <laughs> no traffic and that's more my kind of riding. But, um, you know, it's an adventure. It's new. And I kept thinking, Mike does this all the time. Why am I not liking this? But you take a different route. Yeah, I go to the west side of the island. I go up to Molo Bolo and. Uh, Wait, say that again. Molo Bolo. Is that right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. How Mwa, to Mwa. Mwa, Mwa. Is Mwa, Mwa. Yeah, there I you go. Know. I don't speak Filipino. I've been corrected on that many times. Yeah, yeah they that route's care. better. We go to the west side of the island and uh, it's much more scenic, I think. For sure. And less commercial because on the east side, that's where all the freight uh, boats land and the right. big semis yeah. go and yeah, the yeah. big uh, bus route is that way so we go to the west that's much more enjoyable for us um you took that little ferry across from cebu over yeah there. yeah I took the ferry across so i did it all in one shot it's really not that bad i mean i'm pointing out the negatives but i'd have to say out of all the things i've done in the philippines like getting a scooter and having that freedom and adventure it's kind of the highlight of my trip it just brings on so much so many new opportunities yeah. to do what you want when you want not have to worry about finding the bus route and all that stuff and I, i'm not a huge fan of sitting on a bus anyways but yeah i don't like the yellow bus we're going yeah. up on a ferry we're taking ferry tomorrow yeah it's, it's great weather, I love it. weather permitting did uh how was the traffic in the first part of your journey i know you in cebu city itself down through car car how did you find that um yeah the traffic on the way in it was really really bad and i was expecting it everyone says car car to super city is pretty bad um yeah it's not it's not ideal i'm not gonna lie like i don't i don't love it and i did some riding around cebu like i did lapu lapu to cebu city and it's a it's a whole other animal as far as riding a scooter i mean you're sandwiched between just big cars and trucks a lot of the time a lot of trust of the other driver there's a lot everything has to go smooth it, it is organized chaos right and it, it flows but there's just times where you're like it's kind of nuts it's kind of crazy what i'm doing right now so but, let's talk about your motorcycle where, where else have you gone uh, uh man now that i've been doing this for a while i've done a few longer trips like i've done dumaguete up to Iloilo Ilo and bacolod that's another kind of crazy one too, as far as traffic. But I've done a lot of like Camigan Island, Sikior, like away off the beaten path, all nature type stuff, all on the bike. Yeah, all around Bohol. Um, I love that stuff. I have a huge uh, trip coming up. Actually, Carefree Chris and I are going to do a, a section of Leyte together. Right. On our, he's got a motorbike and I just have the scooter, but we're going to cruise through Leyte and we're talking about uh, Mindanao and stuff too. So, Two wild and crazy guys <laughs> riding through Leyte. My it. warning to you people in Leyte, when you see it, no, nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. And yeah. uh, when is that planned, roughly? Uh, so I'm out of here on the 29th. I have to find a, a scooter to purchase. I've been renting for the last while. It's not ideal. If I had thought of this a while ago, I would have just bought a scooter. A long time. Yeah, Yeah, because it adds up pretty quick. And um, so, yeah, i got to buy a scooter. I'm working on my Philippines driver's license right now. Heidi, shout out to Heidi and GNC Consulting for helping me out with that. That'd be good. Um, yeah, so adventure coming. Have you gone to Mindanao yet on your bike? Uh, yeah, that was another long trip. That's right. I did a, a ferry from Dumaguete to Dapitan. And then once you arrive in Dapitan, you basically can cover like the north part of Mindanao, like Dipalog. I went down to Playardale, Oroqueta. Not waste heads awesome i didn't go way south <laughs> no i just like hugged the northern coast you hear things right like i don't know the routes yet in in mindanao as far as like if you start heading south like some towns are safe others are pretty sketch right so you got to kind of know where you're going so i'm planning another mindanao trip but gonna map out 
avoid the uh, sketchy towns. But that little bit, the northern part of Mindanao, you found that to be no issues, safe it, it was, and comfortable to be in. Not only safe, I would say it's some of the friendliest, most amazing places as far as pulling into a town where they never see a foreigner and everyone wants to talk to you. Everyone wants, wants to know your story. Um, I loved it. I love Mindanao. And I think it gets overlooked because of the fear of, you know, some of these more dangerous areas, mm -hmm. which is valid. But I think the majority is not like that. And there's some really cool experiences to be had. Cool experiences. Down there, I sure. want to I really do want to get down to Davao sometime. I'm not going to ride a motorcycle, but I'm going to take a plane down there and check out John Sonomo, a friend of ours, and hopefully run into Jennifer Terry. She's been on the show before. Mm. And uh, that's something Jan and I want to do. Let's see who's in the house and who, any questions. Hey, Chad, congratulations on getting your parole. Parole. Okay, that one I don't know. <laughs> Chad, I, I think you guys might have mixed up with someone else. Uh, Justin <laughs> Ensign, <laughs> your parole. Philip Carmel, he's been uh, in the middle of this uh, Dumaguete stuff lately. Uh, Cosmo the Cat. Hi, guys. Mike, you was in the background. You was in the background. Yes, yes, yeah. She did that live. She does that stuff. She she enjoys what she does, and uh, I encourage her to uh, be on live as much as she wants. Good morning, Mike and Chad. Enjoy your daily endeavor. Nice watching your channel from Negros. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching. You guys watching Chad's channel? You know, he's the hot YouTuber here. Oh, come of on. Of the male YouTubers, yeah, right. you know, uh, that are out there. <laughs> you know, a lot of guys are struggling to get, you know, 4,000 4, views to 10,000 views. This guy's got two videos in the last few months at a million views. Well, a million I got, I got views. Look who it is. Look who it is. We're talking about you. <laughs> Everyone's asking about you, Janet. Where, where's Janet? There, there she Janet. is. Say hello, Janet. I have, I have, we have 104. 104 in the house. And a lot of you guys are watching on Janet's channel. You know, we're, we're always promoting Janet. Uh, you know, you know her deal. So if you watch it on her channel, that's great. And uh, maybe and she'll make a comment here and there. And Chad needs more coffee, I think. I am devouring these cookies, man. <laughs> this is my breakfast. Like, you gave me six cookies. Is this how you do your breakfast here? No, Janet. Food here. <laughs> we don't have food here. We're leaving town. We don't have much food. Janet will fix you something uh, shortly. Get him some bread and uh, jelly on it or something. And coffee. He likes coffee. All right, let's get some questions in. Yeah. Good morning, guys. Where's uh, Janet? There, you got that answer already. Chicken legs. What's the chat about today? I know we got to get into uh, something. We want to talk about something. <laughs> What's the plan? I'm open to talk. You know, Drill Chad, me. put me well, in the hot seat. Put, Let's go. put you in the hot seat. Well, what can I ask you about hot seats? Have you found the women friendlier in Mindanao or Dumaguete or? Spoke? I can talk about that. Yeah, it's a, yeah. it's it's very different there. So you get a lot of attention. You get a lot of eyes. Just any, I would imagine any foreigner. It's not nothing to do with me. And um, right off, you get right when you get off the ferry. Everyone is staring at you. Everyone seems curious about you. But I would say if you go up and talk to a Filipina um, in an area like that where they don't see many foreigners, the the level of like shyness, the level of like, it just feels like they're, oh my God, this foreigner is coming to talk to me. And they sort of freeze, freeze. and they and the interactions are different Less. for sure. There's also like a concern about their English, like they feel they're shy. They're shy. English. They don't want to sound bad, even though their English is often okay for com for basic conversation. They shy away from that. So it's interesting for those of you guys that want to meet a province Filipina. I think there are wonderful girls down there, but I don't think it would happen quick, right? Like you have to. If you're going to go down there, boots on the ground, I think you need to like go to a town and like stay there for a, hang out for and a while and hang out, get to know people and have them get comfortable with you and seeing how you interact with people and stuff. But it was a close only there for a week. But yeah, I found I found when you when you're riding your motorbike and even if I have Janet on the back, it doesn't matter. Girls will like smile at you. 
Oh yeah. And sometimes if I was single, I would, I would say, whoa, let me turn around and go <laughs> talk to her. But it's something you don't do, right? Have you noticed like as you're driving by the smile and maybe all the, say, yeah, oh. it's kind of, that's so true, right? You yeah. see so many pretty girls when you're on the road or you're just cruising through a town. But like to pull over real quick on a scooter and start it's talking, like a, it's it's a little bit much, right? To hey, just, baby, you hey, go what's for a ride? No, that's not the way to do it. Not the way. To, but I they did do. it one time. There was three girls walking together. Okay, and they were all we smiling and giggling. Well, it didn't really turn into much. They were like inviting me almost with their eyes and their giggles and smiles. But then when I pulled over to talk to them, they all went like quiet and looking at each other. <laughs> Who's going to talk to them? And they didn't know what to say. And um, I think I asked them. If they could be like my tour guide or something like that. <laughs> but I get that, you know, even through um, Valencia or going out to Darwin, you'll pass a couple girls and they'll look at you and they'll smile. One, maybe they're just looking at everybody going by and, and just they smile because they're nice. But yeah. sometimes you're the foreigner. You're, you're a white guy. Come, You know, uh, you're someone different. And they have oh, a they, and their curiosity is there. A huge curiosity. It, it's such a weird feeling, right? Like mm -hmm. some people have described it as like B level celebrity. Yeah. In a way, I'm not saying that I I'm some celebrity at all, but just like the way that they act is the way that someone would act to a celebrity. Like they they're like staring, they're excited, they get a little shy, like a little starstruck. I don't know if that's a fair analogy, but you know what I'm saying? I know. Not Tom Cruise no, level, no. but like like someone that, I don't know. I've talked to people about it. They get, I they really it, do get excited about it. Yeah, they do. I put it as being the circus is in town. You know, yeah, maybe that, that's better. You know, <laughs> hey, look, sure. we got a couple of foreigners in, in town, you know, and I'm sure it's the same with a Korean or whatever, but uh, American or, or uh, Northern North America, um, expat or visitor it's weird. is different and same with the backpackers that you see i'm sure they get the same looks except For maybe sure. they're more on the tourist trail yeah it's very different where they go like backpackers go to yeah the tourist circuit mwabwal sikior they see so many yeah. foreigners there even like dumaguete cebu city i've been talking to people about that lately it's it's an interesting dynamic here we should talk about this for single guys that are out there things have changed in the philippines like, there are so many more foreigners here now than they were even a year ago. Yeah. And as far as, like, trying to meet a Filipina, if you're in these areas, there's no more, like, that excitement we're talking about doesn't happen no, in these popular either. areas at all. In fact, they almost try to avoid foreigners sometimes. There's so many guys, like Ayala Mall. I made a video a year ago when I was so new, and I'm walking around, I interviewed some Filipinas, talking about how this is a great place to meet a Filipina. It's the worst place to meet a Filipina. Like, yeah. talk to a lot of Filipinas that they avoid that mall because there's just so many foreigners and they all just go up thinking they can just go up to anyone and try to pick them up, you know, be my yeah. girlfriend. And it's it's changed quite a bit. And then online, you're trying to meet a Filipina. There are so many guys around the world now. There's so much hype about the Philippines and meeting a girl here that they're overwhelmed with Inundated with with method. guys now. And so even girls in the province, because if you're online, it doesn't matter. They're they're juggling so many conversations with so many foreigners. The whole dynamic is is changed now. It, it creates a challenge. And um Chris and I were talking about it and he's single too, but um he was saying he knows a lot of people in Cebu and he said like 90% of his guy friends are single. Yeah. Like it's, it's I think they're single. It's not like you just show up in the Philippines and you know you're just gonna find this great girlfriend right away. Everybody told me when I was coming here, you're gonna meet 50 girls at the airport. As soon as you get off the plane, you. they'll just yeah, chase like you. You feel Beatles. like the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. Guys. Not even close. No. Not even close. Um, so you you get attention, and usually in these popular areas, but the attention you get, the girls that are gonna be right in the front are not always the ones One. that you are looking for if you're looking for a genuine relationship. So those girls are tucked away and they're not easy to find. There, there are, are great girls here, yeah. but it's no longer the place where they're easy to find. And a lot of a lot of guys tell me they don't want any kind of city girl. But I keep reminding them the province girls when they finish high school, 
They're trying to get they go to the city for work. So they're no, in the they're in the city. It, they're, they're, but they're not hanging. It's hard to find them. It's hard to find because they go home after work. I think a province girl that lives in the city and is working, that's a great combination. Yeah. There's amazing girls in Cebu and Manila, but it's it's finding them. And a lot of them are like, they're not looking for a foreigner. They're no. focused on trying to be productive and help their family. And yeah, yeah they go to work. Then when work's over, they go back to the boarding house or the apartment that they share. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not really living that single life girl that you think, of, right. They got a one bedroom apartment somewhere and they go to work and they go out at night. Yeah. Um, a lot of these girls, there's two, three or four of them in one apartment. Totally. One, you know, one studio and some live in boarding houses, which are just a small bedroom with a shared bathroom, shared yeah. kitchen. They're area. just resting on their days off. They don't yeah. have time. A lot of, I think a big challenge too, a lot of foreigners come here with this mentality that it's going to be easy and quick. And there's a lack of patience for a lot of foreigners. Like they just want to, and, and maybe for good reason too, if they're not here for that long, if they're not retired here and they want to just come here find someone, make it happen. And um, to meet a good one, you have to take your time. Yeah, It's that patient. instant gratification that we have in the West. You know, when, when you go buy something, you want them to deliver it that day. You know, you don't want True. to hear We'll put it on order six months from now. And it's the same thing when they get off the plane. Sometimes they don't even rest up in the hotel over, you know, and get a good night's sleep. They, boom, they're running out hoping to meet somebody. And That's right. And that mentality just rubs, like a good girl is cautious and it's going to sort of throw her off yeah. if you come at them with that sort of mindset, that hurry up, I need a girlfriend kind of thing. And another thing I'm going to point out when Jan and I were in Cebu and Two Filipinas told, showed me this. We we're standing on the railing by Bo's Coffee, and two two foreigners were walking on the ground level, and they said, "Why he don't dress nice?" And what it is is, you know, the dirty T-shirt with a with a stain. He's got his backpack. He's got the ball cap. You know, like me, how I his hair is long. He hasn't shaved. Dirty tennis shoes. And then you look at the girls. They're all dressed up nice. But if you look at the Filipino guys, they're wearing nice shirts, they're groomed well, and the competition is is out there now. Because a lot of these younger Filipino guys, they're going to school, they're getting better jobs, and uh, the economics is a little bit better. Yeah, so, and that, that put, really put a collar on sometimes. That's from that's what change. You know, it, that's you know. in the city. I'm not saying in the province. You know, it's different in the province, but in the city, uh, represent yourself a little better if you want to meet a higher quality girl what do you think about you know if you meet a filipino online and you get their relationship history nine times out of ten they say i don't date filipinos anymore and it's the same often the same story they'll say i was cheated on and i no longer date filipinos i'm just looking for a foreigner do you think you're talking about economics do you really think that it's about that or do you think it's 90 per plus percent about we're fooling ourselves if we don't say economics doesn't play a part in that yeah it, it it plays the same thing back in the states you know a girl's not going to date a guy that's homeless you know that homeless guy ain't gonna get a date but i think once they've had a bad experience and uh, more with single moms and uh, girls who have been cheated on multiple times yeah they might shy away from not trusting any filipino anymore yeah it's a combination of things yeah. But of course, economics plays a big, big time. You, opportunity. You, you're, yeah. you're fooling yourself. Any girl, I remember my first wife before, you know, we talked about getting married. Her mom would tell her, you should go date James. He's a dentist. Don't date Mike. He's a machinist. You know, the, you have a better future. And always they're looking who's going to take care of them in the long run. And, uh, you know, to fulfill the dreams that they have. And if, if you think in the States, women uh, don't want transactional relationships and it's only here in the Philippines, you're fooling yourself because you have to be able to provide. And even if you're going 50, 50, you get in one of these relationships where the girl's working and you each pay half the bill. Well, if you couldn't pay half the bill, she wouldn't be with you. Yeah. Yeah. Every girl wants to feel secure, right? It's safe security. and secure. That's it. Yes. yes. You know, and in the Philippines, if they're not working, and even if they are working, uh, they're exchanging. They're exchanging, not their love. They're exchanging. You provide the income. You know, you're the you're the provider. Just like 
in the U.S. in the 50s and 60s. I'll stay home and I'll clean the house. I'll make sure your clothes are clean. I'll prepare the meals. I'll do the shopping. My job is to take care of the house. And your job is to uh, bring in the money to support the house. Yeah, that brings up an interesting thing talked about as oh. far as like traditional relationships, right? Yes. So the guy's the breadwinner, he works and the, the wife or girlfriend will stay back and maybe help raise the kids and, and yes. take care of that, right? That's how it always was. What about this new, obviously the way it is now in the West where both people work equally, but a lot of guys want to come here and meet a traditional woman. Like what does that actually mean for a guy that wants to maybe bring a girl back to the U.S. It's more expensive. A lot of guys are trying to meet a girl that they, that can work as well and help be productive and help bring some money in. Well, so how does that work? Like, what does Ferris bring Janet in on this conversation? Yeah, Janet, so like, yeah. once a girl starts working, how does that impact this traditional desire for a guy, right? As far as, you know, the cooking and the cleaning and all these things and taking care of her man and bringing that that dynamic that every guy wants when they come to the Philippines. Well, you, could, then you can have it in the Philippines uh, if you yeah. want a girl to work. Other than being a college graduate and having, you know, a very good job. Most jobs don't pay that much. And, you know, you're talking four or 500 is a good paying job here. U.S. money a month for a, a girl. Me, I wanted a full-time girlfriend, partner, live-in when I met Janet and I told her that. So you have to be prepared to supplement what she's losing by not working. But if you want to have a working girl that's working all the time, you're going to lose the time with her. She's going to be gone 12 hours a day, six days a week. And, you know, she's going to be tired when she gets home. You probably have to hire a maid because she won't be able to or, or won't want to clean up the house and cook meals. So, you know, there's a added responsibility and expectation to yeah. what you would want them to do i think it applies more for the guys that want to come here and go back to the u.s yes yes most guys were are hoping that their filipino will work as well and kind of help well because yeah, of the, it's back. easy to do it here right yeah. you can meet someone and and replace their 500 bucks yes. or whatever it is yeah yeah it's easy to, it's easy to replace but if you're thinking of taking the girl back if I'm, I'm going to stand with this. I stand on this. If you're in your late sixties and she's in her twenties, it's going to be a rough road for you. And if you expect her to work to help, because it's expensive in the U.S. If she has a job, she, her coworkers are going to talk. That's They're going to want to have point. a drink after work. Well, yeah, Mike's a nice guy, but he's so old. Are you getting any? You know, they're going to. You know how it's going to catch tough. up to them. It's going to catch up. And yeah. the younger guys that work, guys in the 20s, 30s, they're single. They're going to hit on them. So they're going to be, you know, all of a sudden, and I'm going to quote Rick a, you take them back now. They're the prize. They're, they're, the, they're the gift that all the single guys want. You know, a, a, an Asian, beautiful Asian girl and easy to take from you. I have but a, if you're closer in age. Yeah. If you say in your 40s and she's in her 30s or late 20s and you have a goal, oh, we're going to work 15, 20 years and then we're going to go move back to the Philippines. Uh, that's the golden ticket. 100%. I know a guy that uh, I met early on. I made a video about this, actually. I interviewed them. And if anyone watched my channel way back when, he's a 71-year-old and I met him at a hotel in Wabwa. And he's like, hey, I want to introduce you to my fiance. And me and a bunch of other guys that were staying at this hotel. So the next day he brings her and this guy's like six, four, big, tall, like corporate retired 71 year old. And then his fiance was just turned 19 mm. from the province braces. She looked 14 and tiny, tiny girl next to this giant older guy. And so this is the first time that I've ever seen a, like the big kind of age gap. And everyone was just like, oh my God, <laughs> like what uh -huh. the heck? Fast forward. So I made a video, I interviewed them and I ended up taking it down because the comments were so bad. And this really? girl was yeah. just devastated oh, yeah. reading these comments and everyone was just ripping on them. And so took it down, whatever. Fast forward, they, they just got officially married and um, she's now living with him in Arizona, in, in the US. So he lives in a like a senior retirement community, one of these types of communities. Yeah, 55 and over in Arizona. 
where he just plays like pickleball every day and they post uh photos but it's she her friends now are like his friends so she's hanging out with like 70 plus she's going to these senior gatherings and she's just hanging out with her friends man. yeah she's hanging out where he does yeah far as i know everything's fine but he did say big challenges big challenges in that she misses her friends she's yeah. like trying to find her identity she's not in school yet she's trying to figure out how to like how is that going to work long term that, right that's such a hard there's it's yeah. possible to do that and he did it but but he's right. hiding in my opinion he's hiding her in the senior development there where she doesn't have access she to doesn't have access yeah. to these other girls talking to her these other guys and uh yeah. it's a challenge because they'll be pulling even if she is 100 percent loyal which she is and is fully dedicated someone's always going to be pulling out of on a string hey you're cute hey can i pump your gas hey you know it's always going to be something and uh it's just like you when you come here all of a sudden all the girls hey you know yeah talking to you it's it's flattering it's flattering and sometimes you're tempted and just think of this girl someday she'll be tempted you know and hopefully not hopefully not let's see uh let's get to some of these yeah. comments here um two years congrats my thank you so much yes i'm very happy with janet and anybody who knows me knows that uh janet's the one uh, i always use you and you and janet as like uh like a good couple like when i talk to someone about like what it's all about when you when you find a good one like i <laughs> you guys are a great couple thank you uh yeah brent yeah the, there goes the neighborhood <laughs> chad's in the house he walked in the door yelling mike are you there yeah no knocking no knocking no ow <laughs> ow you're supposed to yell from the street you didn't hear me <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh good kevin's uh good morning guys will be there in the month of april visiting girlfriend good hope we get to see you when you come Got a question at gas stations. Do you use regular credit cards like Visa or some other form of payment? I'll let you answer that one. Cash. Cash, baby. Cash is king here. There's I don't some... think they take a credit card. I don't think they do. Yeah. I they have very reward few cards. Take credit card. Reward mm, card. Maybe Gcash? I don't know. No. no. Not, Not even cash. Gcash? Cash. Yeah, it's cash. Cash cash for almost everything if you're in like manila cebu city at a big restaurant or at the mall credit card is often fine yeah. but outside of that it's it's cash or gcash in some cases but if you leave the big city have have cash and have small denominations yes that's a that's a good point to make and if you need to break a thousand peso bill do it when you get gas yeah what's that let's see it oh. it's reward if every letters See you can use one. they have reward cards all over just like they do in the u.s you know at albertson's and smith's right. you know the rewards card she's got like all the money i spend this gas and she might have 40 pesos and she told me the story once how she was out of gas and out of money before she met me and she gave the guy the rewards card she had 100 pesos on it got her through the week are a lot of your viewers like are those planning to come here and they're getting info about like stuff like this yeah yeah my my viewers are people who are coming or somewhere planning here. retirement they're hoping to come here they're planning yeah. you know it's it's in the some are 10 years away some are uh, a few days away so here's something to throw out there that i didn't know about it but a viewer from my channel mentioned it so when i first came here like cash is king going to an atm you can take out I think 10,000 pesos at once. I think you can go back to back and yes. take out 20,000. So you can take like, it's like about 400 bucks. Um, however, like my Bank of America debit card was charging me, it was quite a bit. It was like 10 or $15 every time. Foreign transaction fees. Yeah, all these fees. Yeah. There's the local fee, the foreign transaction fee. And someone commented about Charles Schwab does a, it's online banking and you can get a checking account with them and it's a hundred percent reimbursed for all ATM fees. Yeah. So I, I have Charles Schwab. Yeah. So I, I went ahead and opened up an account. You can do it online. It's super, you save a ton of money because you're going to go to that ATM like quite a bit. So just a little nugget of info there. Charles Schwab, check it out. For Charles Schwab, you have to, account. I believe you have to open a brokerage account. Uh, I don't know if they changed, but when I got Maybe, it, I, I had the brokerage account. Yeah. And it was attached to the 
uh, checking account. Yeah, which is a debit I have card. both. And at the end of the month, uh, well, this is back when I was in the States, uh, at the end of the month on your statement, it says reimbursement and, you know, $60 or whatever the fees are as the month goes on. Yeah. So it's it's a good uh, thing to have. It works here. A lot of people use it. And also Navy Credit Union, I believe. Oh, yeah? A couple of the credit unions have a no fee uh, thing. Do you ever use, uh, do you ever like wire yourself money? Always. Yeah, always. I send money. My money to myself is um, I'll send cash sometimes, cash pickup. Uh, and then sometimes I'll do deposit into my bank account or Janet's bank account. I get a better exchange rate going right to the bank account. Uh, less people handling it, no employees involved. So it's yeah. cheaper. So you're, you're a U.S. bank where you get your, your pension and everything? You just go bank to bank? To no, care? I do. Uh, it's a three-way. I don't want my banks to know I'm here three-way so yeah the three-way action i have world remit so i'll make the transfer from world remit to my bank or me personally here and then they'll ask you how are you going to fund this transaction and i give them my debit card and they just debit it from my wells fargo account or my schwab account boom and then from world remit sends it here so schwab or wells fargo doesn't know i'm getting the money here in the Philippines. ah uh, gotcha all you right know. Because I've been here a while. I've heard rumors about they'll cancel you if you live overseas too long. I haven't seen it yet, but eh, it's just something I do. And they don't charge me. There's no fee, the $1.99. They don't charge that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that much anyway. No, it's not. Fees. No, it's yeah. not. Mike is here, son. Yes. Mike is my father. Is he your son? Mike. Yes, he's Mike. It's my daddy. <laughs> who's your daddy baby <laughs> rock on guys thank brent let's get a few uh, through a few of these how long is the bike ride so it's cebu to here oh from cebu it took me good question um with stops and everything and you got a ferry it was like four hours or something like that the whole thing yeah yeah you, the ferry's pretty short i think the ride from cebu to the Liluan port is like you say like three Three and a half, four. Am I getting it wrong? You're getting that wrong. Yeah. So long from ride. from car car. You haven't seen me ride. The, yeah. Well, me and Janet, we stop a lot. It takes us six hours from Cebu to uh, to the it didn't port. Didn't take me that long. Yeah. I, but we I think stopped. it was much less. I kept rolling through. Yeah. Remember, I'm seventy. I stopped for you know an hour lunch. Yeah. My the butt, butt hurts. does hurt. Yeah. Even on the upgraded scooter. Yeah. 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 So you got to. Uh, Every Jan hour, get up and stretch. And yeah. Janet's back there too. Stop, stop, and uh, and we stop and take. You guys do the longer route though. Yeah, that's we'll why it took me a lot less. Yeah. I did the short route, a lot of potholes, but it, it is yeah, quicker. It's, short, it's shorter there, but it's not that long. And you can make. There's a lot of places to stop, a lot of beaches, a lot of a lot of scenic places to stop and take pictures. Uh, hey, Mike Edwin from Kansas City, how you doing, G man? Uh, Dumaguete is a sleepy town. It is. It is. Have you wandered Dumaguete late at night? Uh, well, I haven't. I've ridden through on my scooter. Or What's the late? latest you've been riding through Dumaguete? Uh, geez, good question. Maybe after somebody's party or something. One yeah. in the morning, two in the morning. I don't know. Honestly, I'm not a super late night person. Yeah. Probably not that late, but so, yeah, it slows down quite a bit. It slows down sleepy, quite a bit. Is it a sleepy town? I think that is more like is it a dead town is there a lot mm. i wouldn't say so no, not at all that's dumaguete is not a sleepy town um i call it a sleepy town but you think so yeah yeah because i'm in bed by eight so it's been, it's <laughs> you don't know asleep. what's going on i don't know what's no, going like on. if you're along the boulevard there's you know there's, oh yeah yeah there's, there's tons of people there's tons there's live music it's not a huge city like you're not going to get the cebu city nightlife no, but no. um yeah there's enough of a vibe going on here yeah yeah it's more of a retirement it's a, scene and a young party scene. It's a you college town. So you have the, the influx of the students. You know, uh, you'll yeah. notice in the coffee shops, coffee shops in the afternoon. It's, true. it's much more students. Yeah. Using the Wi-Fi and, and getting together. On the boulevard, um, when it's not sunny and it's not hot, you'll see a lot of young people walking, a lot of date. Janet calls it the uh, they're on a date to people will be walking yeah, yeah. and it's where they go young for locals retirement yeah. for o older guys yeah. yeah 
the expat is older, but a lot of college towns back in the US, it's the same way. You have the crowd that's going to the university, but the people who live in the town and around the town are older. Yeah. Because there's no uh, jobs there. There's you know no factories or nothing. So it's it's to me it's just a sleepy college town and it has action. You want to find a nightlight. Why not? It's open late. You can enjoy that. I think what makes Dumaguete great though, like people come here and there seems to be mixed feelings on Dumaguete. Some people love it, some people hate it. It is sort of a kind of congested little area. Some call it a dirty town. Yeah. Uh, the infrastructure bubble, whatever. What I think what makes Dumaguete great though is it's quick access to some of the most amazing, like if you're into nature stuff, if you're into someone just asked about snorkeling, if you're into snorkeling and reef, if you're into you know, jungle and waterfalls and hiking or mountain biking or anything like that. Like out of all the places that I've been, I think Dumaguete is one of the best as far as a place to live and have a routine of like that kind of thing. Dumaguete to me, if you're looking for a girl, it's not the perfect place to come. I got yeah. lucky and found. And many guys have come here and found, you know, uh, Paul, uh, Mark, uh, Gio, and found their girlfriends and, and their wives here. But it's it's hard to find. It, it's hard to find to go through the um, yeah they're hiding. That's right, like we said earlier. Yeah, but it, once you in a relationship and you want a nice place to live, housing is affordable here. I think people think it's high, but I think it's very affordable. No, for sure. Chad, do you GoPro camera when you snorkel? I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've done a few videos in the past with like snorkeling as part of the video and. Yep, GoPro all the way. Will you post a video? Yeah, I'll, I'll do some some vlogging in the next few days. I'm gonna go to Apple Island tomorrow. I'll make a little video about that. So yeah. Well, okay. Why all the drama and Dumaguete guys? The drink guys and drinking don't mix. I thought the uh, gossip with the women there. I left Cebu a few weeks ago. It has not changed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the, you know any city anywhere in this world at night there's going to be a fight somewhere you know especially if you're drinking in bars and stuff there's always and you don't even hear about it in Cebu I bet you there's 10 fights easily every night somewhere in Cebu if not it's just, so that's many a more. noisier topic right yeah. like it's such a small Dumaguete percentage of what's happening big, here yeah. yeah but you hate everyone talks about it and spreads you know the news when it comes to negative news yeah. I don't think that defines Dumaguete it does not at, at all, all. Not no, one, no, no. one I, incident doesn't define any city at all. Yeah, I, I don't see it that way. Hello from uh, Luzon. Alan retired in the Philippines. Hey, how you doing? What's up, Alan? Chad, I got a brand new Suzuki you can use in Cebu. Oh. Now, Philip, he lives up in uh, the northern part of Cebu. Philip, we need to talk. I need to, uh, I really need to buy a scooter. That's what I'm thinking. I've been renting this whole time. and. Um, I think it's time to pull the trigger. Yeah. A used one's fine. I think a used one because you can get registered like instantly. Is the only thing that would be scary about buying used is what condition it's in from the middle of nowhere and late day. But um, yeah, so brand new Suzuki Bergman. All right, mm -hmm. wonder what that's all about, Philip. Let Check me know the out. details. Let's see. Hello there. Uh, my trans is that my transition to the Philippines. Good morning from Dallas, Texas. How you doing? Chicken legs, always talking to Janet. Well, Chicken thanks. legs are one of our, he's always first. Hey, hey guys. Frank. Awesome. I subscribed to you both. Good thanks to see you. Thanks for subscribing, again. man. Yeah. You know, I've been asking him for two days to come and do this. Uh, it took a lot of arm pulling. <laughs> Who, me? He asked, what was Janet going to cook him? And that was the deal. Giovanni. Gio. Yeah. Uh, hello, Janet. Mike, Chad. How you doing, buddy? Janet, you should do the videos. On your channel. She should be live streaming right now, competing. Competing. Let's see who gets more viewers. <laughs> we lose. <laughs> How many viewers you got on your channel? Are you doing a live right now? No, she's live. It, oh, oh, you're gonna take like it's 159. It's gonna just tank. Plus her it's all gonna jump over to yeah, Janet. Yeah, you guys all jump over to Janet. That'd be great. That'd be great. They'll be watching on the laptop and they're watching the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Some watch on two. Uh, we just got home from uh, uh, buffet crabfish and crabs and Oriental buffet. Sounds Ooh, good. That sounds 
Darn good. I don't know what I'm having for lunch today. Raw daddies. Mm. I'm from New York City. W just discovered your channel. Oh, oh from Care for Chris. Yeah, if you mentioned like the you writing. Guys, yeah. Look, you guys. We are psyched for this. This is kind yeah, of like think about this future ride. Yeah. Well, it's a work in progress. I um, I've been doing some adventures and I've done a little bit of solo, but something like that, I kind of want. I was sort of waiting. I thought, well, maybe I'll have a girlfriend to go with, and I'm still single. And then, long story short, Chris bumped into each other, and we both started talking about like things that we want to do. And all of a sudden, like this idea of this bike trip, we aligned as far as what we both want to do. And right away, we're like, let's do it. You know, let's go. And we both wanted to check out Leyte. So, yeah, we just want to get off the beaten path a little bit and cruise through. He's been to South Leyte and showed me some photos of some of these beaches. And oh, it's beautiful down there. It looks amazing. We're actually probably going to go to the north part too, uh, Billaron. Um, amazing beaches and waterfalls up there and just go from the top all the way down to the bottom and then probably ferry over to uh, Surigao City and do Mindanao from Surigao City down to Davao City and then maybe over to General Santos. So these are areas that most foreigners don't really go to not not riding in, yeah they're not they're not taking well, us from place to place sure well for sure like Dav Davao city but Leyte isn't on the circuit no you know no, it's, it's not off the circuit there's and a few people that live there but yeah i've been doing a lot of like our channels are been similar in terms of like interviews and stuff like that and i want to get back and mix in a lot more like adventure and travel and that's kind of how my channel started. So I'm really excited about that too, like bringing in a whole new style of content and just unique interactions with locals, you know, cruising around the Philippines and see what happens, you know, yeah. from nature stuff to towns and cities. And Sounds exciting. We're looking forward fun, to some man. videos. I'm super that. psyched about it. Yeah. Even just posting, you know, some, some photos here and there would be great. How long in Cebu, Mike? Uh, I'm trying to get there next. We're only there for a couple of days. We're just collecting our belongings and, and coming back. Uh, the lease is up. We're turning in the key, paid the electric bill, get our deposit, and uh, back to Dumaguete. Might meet up with Heidi uh, for a couple of interviews, but that's about it. You have mentioned your health and that mm. you've had health problems. Do you feel comfortable being here? Uh, like not so good health care. You know, I don't find the health care that bad. And... Um, knock on wood i haven't had anything serious i'm just i just did a physical a while back i i see a doctor for my cough and uh i find the health care more than adequate for what i need right now if i had a severe injury or uh, a critical condition i don't know i haven't had do that you issue. do all your health care stuff in, you go back to cebu for that or do you do it here here, do here at Soma. Pretty much all here. Everything's so much. The only thing we're doing up in uh, Cebu is the dental for Janet. Mm. And that's because we started there. So we're going to keep going there to finish it. Somebody says hello, Janet. Say hello to these people, Janet. Watching Jared. you too, Chad. Thanks, Jerry. We need all the help we can hey, get. Hey, Jerry, on. did you see my video on Jerry, Jerry? He's, he's the man. Jerry, you got a bunch of videos with Jerry. I got, yeah, like three now. Jerry, the, the Jerry, story, is how old is Jerry? 81. And he's getting married. I wouldn't doubt if that's where it's going. Like, I, I think he should say they're buying rings. Or maybe. Yeah, no, thing. they did. They did. Yeah, they so, did. They did a little. So uh, they're like engaged. Commitment ring. Yeah. Each other. Oh, that's sweet. You know what? At 81, freaking go for it. You know, yeah. like, anyways. Check out the channel. This guy's 81 years old. He has never been anywhere. He's living, he was living in a small town in Tennessee with 10,000 people. Yeah. Never been on a plane before. And then watching like Mike, watching you, watching Paul, and going, what am I doing? Like, I haven't done anything my whole life. Sells everything, moves to the Philippines. And um, yeah, man, things have evolved for him. I'm doing a video on the topic of Jerry. I'm not going to talk about him, but he was able to adapt for an old guy. I'm old, but he's older than me. He came to Dumaguete. He got a yeah. place to live here and everything. And he just didn't like it. And so he adapted and said, I'm going where I want to be. Yeah. He didn't let a financial commitment or a bad decision get in the way. You know, the, the term I use is there's no crying in the Philippines. If you don't like it, if you don't like where you're at or the people you're around, move. 
find the right place for you. The thing with him too, though, and this is like, he just showed up. Like he got excited, he got pumped and it was a bit impulsive, spontaneous. Really? Like He's like, I'm just going to sell everything and go, I'm going to go live where Mike and old dog live and just try to figure it out. And it's not necessarily for everyone here, right? Like, yeah. You ride a scooter. He didn't have that independence. You know, there's just limitations as far as the kind of places you can live right. in. Yes. A guy his age, he needed the the safety bubble of a nice development like Mac to Newtown or, you know, a place in Cebu Business Park. So you, you got to really figure out what's good for you. And I'm, I'm glad I ran into him. I was able to help him with all this. But it's good to know people. And that's really half the challenge here. It's like you need a network of people. Yes. And for sure. But I'm proud of him and the decisions he made. He didn't just sit in a bad situation that he was uncomfortable in. He made the move. Oh, he did. And, and he didn't let no one influence where he went. Super, like, optimistic and positive. Like, yeah, he rolled with the punches big time. Yeah. And uh, he was just ready for any new adventure. He, that he, he adapted. And he, he um, did. every time I met him, he had a smile on his face. <laughs> for sure, man. <laughs> and he's living the dream. He's, he is. Uh, I got to support your channel, Mike, uh, has a lot of subscribers. Well, thank you. Well, he's saying he got to support your channel. Mike has a lot of subscribers. Oh, yeah. Oh, Janet. He's talking to Janet. Talking to Janet's channel. Yeah. How about uh, talking about methods to overcome, overcome Filipino shyness. shyness? Yeah, there are. There are methods to that, 100%. So the approach, if you go to talk to a Filipino, let's say boots on the ground you're here you want to meet someone the approach cannot be you can't be in your head i got to get her number i want her to you know i want to see if i can take her on a date the approach has to be so much more passive friends first mentality it put, takes all the pressure off if you're just talking like you would anyone else um i've noticed a big difference in that if you're just keeping the conversation general about something else not about her not like you're so beautiful and Yes. I'd love to go out with you. Like, can I get your number? Like, that is not the way the to personal approach questions to shy. Are, are Yeah, not Nothing personal. Talk about yourself. Talk about your experience, how much you, you know, you're enjoying the Philippines. Ask her general questions. So that will relieve some of the shyness for sure. Um, taking your time with it is really the biggest thing. Let's see. What else could help with doing this? If, if you see a girl that you're interested in, as you're walking and you don't know if she's single or whatever and she's with other people i think you can approach the group and and just say hello how are you and say hey i'm single i just got here i'm looking for friends and if somebody's single in the group someone's going to out them out and say oh she's single and available but if that girl's by herself she's just going to smile at you say hello sir and go about her business she'll be too shy. yeah absolutely i think so too i think um you know, being goofy, being silly, like Filipinos, they love to laugh, quick to smile, quick to laugh. Don't take it anything too serious, you know, like know. joking around, not with sarcasm. That's not big here. But, you know, being silly, goofy um, and smiley, that right away will relieve some of that shyness and stress, mm -hmm. too. Tell yeah. them you're lost. They'll help you find where you're going. Yeah. Make fun of yourself. <laughs> yeah. that is I got here. I don't know go. what to do. I got all this stuff. <laughs> Make fun of yourself. They... If you dig into their personal life early, they're not really want to share. Maybe there's things they're say fake. They don't want to tell you yet, and you'll force them maybe to tell you a false. Yeah, to to save face and look look better. So don't dig into personal. Find that over time. Yeah, personal. take your time and and adjust expectations. I think a lot of foreigners, Americans, they're they're not used to that kind of shyness, and they'll and they'll take it the wrong way, like maybe take it as though they're not interested in you. Like them being shy and quiet and not engaging with you doesn't necessarily mean they're not interested in, in you. And so you have to just like be patient, take it slow. And that shyness often just withers away. It withers away after yeah. a little bit. Once they're comfortable with you. Yeah. Hey, Triple L, how you doing, buddy? Meet Chad. Hey, Janet, put Chad's link on there. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I'm moving there in March. Uh, I have a place already, but I want to visit areas. Traveling around. I think if you have the opportunity, you should travel. Moving there in March. Have you already picked your spot? Are you committed? That's something that I think is like committing to something 
up front? Like, did you take your time? Yeah, you started in Peng Lao, right? Peng Lao. Yeah. And you thought, like, that's going to be my place. That's going to be my retirement. The first two weeks, you know, it was heaven. Yeah. It was heaven. Walking the beach Beautiful white beach every day, you know, talking to the guys in their little fishing boats. And uh, eventually the guys, they didn't like you anymore because you never bought any fish from them. Yeah. Right. Oh, here comes this guy. He's going to blah, blah. And, and, and then, you know, so. Uh, I think the first year should be feel it out. Try different spots. Like do a, do a month here, do a month there or whatever. Like figure out. I'm a firm you believer. Do. Your final destination is when you meet a girl, you'll end up in her hometown. Possibly. You know, if she's from a bigger town. If she's from, you know, like a Dumaguete yeah. or a Leyte area or Ilo Ilo, you're going to to go up to her town and you and you're going to sort of like it because she's there uh very seldom you're going to find a girl that lives in dumagetti and say let's go live in Davao." that takes a long time to take for her to get away yeah, yeah to leave her that, that relationship family. will have to develop over time to do that but after a month meeting somebody and then say let's go move away from your family yeah it wouldn't happen quickly yeah. yeah takes time edwin let's see what you I think Duma is good for a couple of weeks. Then I would hit Mindanao, Samuanga uh, area, stay in the city area. limits, and get home before dark. I think Duma is good for a couple of weeks, like for traveling through. Or yeah, I agree with Mindanao. Visit, yeah. I'd spend time in Zamboanga. I yeah. regret not spending more time in, in Mindanao. You know, but it's not too late. It's it's not too late, trips. but you know, age is creeping up, and we have responsibilities at home. We have that's we true. have a child here, yeah. so there's a big difference if you get involved with a girl with with family, children, single mom. Say, you have to accept that responsibility. And uh, some cases, the grandparents will watch the child while you travel. Yeah, right, right. You know, so reading ahead to some of these comments. Oh, you're getting way ahead. Where should we go? <laughs> uh, Someone mentioned with have you met a blogger guys asking questions in the film no I've either no I, no I, never never heard of that, that guy. guy regular guy went diplog when was, i was reading yeah let's go ahead yeah okay yeah I, I know that regular guy was down there and he said don't go down that way um yeah i don't i don't know of that particular incident i was in diplog and i agree i was actually on a street it was a dark lit street and i pulled over to look at my phone to check my google maps and it was nighttime and I noticed, I felt it at first, but I noticed someone was walking up behind me. And all of a sudden, like I turn and he's like five feet behind me getting closer. And I don't know if he was just going to grab my phone or what, but I could tell it was not legit. And I took off. And I think there's probably some potential sketch like that. I don't think Dipolog is a dangerous city. I didn't get that feeling, but there probably are like pockets of the neighborhood that are you know, where you're going to be more vulnerable. I think regular guys been to other parts of uh, Mindanao that were more dangerous overall, like the whole town. I didn't see that episode. He's, he's but pretty, he said, I didn't see that one. I think it was a, he's a little bit more risque than I. Yeah. He goes places I wouldn't go. And he goes places without even a hotel room locked up. He doesn't even know where the hotel is. Or, yeah. If there's even one in the town, you yeah, know, he's yeah, just yeah. walking through. And he'll also out. say, like, on his live stream or whatever, where he is at that moment, and he he can be controversial yeah and he'll be like i'm in room eight at this hotel right now come and get me <laughs> it's like <laughs> you wouldn't do that regular guys he's, but that's, he's that's dangerous him. that way totally. that's, that's him and uh but good point i think that you know maybe i maybe i did luck out i overall my feeling though when i went to mindanao and i hugged the these like going further south of dipolog i've heard that it can get a little bit yeah, the, the danger zones start to pick up. Well, I didn't feel any safety issues the whole time. And now, maybe Cebu, I left out. In but... Cebu, I, I thought there's dangerous spots. And it's more the, the squatter villages. You know, yeah. uh, you'll have the high rise condos, and then all of a sudden you'll have this three block area of uh, rusty roofs and people yeah. cramped. There, I wouldn't really be walking at night through these places. That's it. I think it's like, be smart. And that wasn't smart of me to pull over on a dark, street to pull out an iphone to look at a map where no one was around like that's stupid yeah i think you just have to use common sense and at night time you got to be extra careful we always look for or i do gas stations when we're yeah. driving cebu mm -hmm. and you know it's raining or whatever it is and i need to stop and open my bag i pull into like a service station yeah, yeah. for and just 
out of the way and do what I got to do yeah. and leave. Well, let people around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Same CC goes for TV in the U.S. Stuff. Like, yeah, there's danger if you're road tripping across the country. Like, go to a, a well lit area. Like, and I I drove through downtown Detroit, and it was there was some sketch, man. In Cleveland, worse, growing man. up, the near yeah. west side wasn't safe. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the back back way in the day, you know, on the east side, the Huff Avenue area was not safe. Yeah. But there's there's every think... town, everywhere in the world, there's sure. little pockets, and if you're a stranger. You just have to be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's lucky it doesn't happen more often. But uh, it's it, overall, it's safe. I would 100% agree with that. I almost feel like people are looking out for you. Like, as a foreigner, they value you here. I get that feeling that they respect you. The instincts are to respect you here and take care of you. Yes. Let's see, Philip. I'm going to skip that one. Uh, if you decide to visit the sketchy part of Mindanao, would you hire an armed guard from a private security, security company? company? No. Okay. I've never been to the sketchy areas. I talked to someone that went to one of the more sketchy areas. He didn't like it. He didn't like the vibe, the energy, the way they looked at him. It wasn't like smiling faces. But he also said he didn't feel like his life was at risk. He didn't feel like he would need an armed guard with him. There are probably areas that are dangerous but i think it's so few areas even in mindanao where it's that kind of dangerous yeah. what is that the sulu region or something like that no, it's, it's like a, a tiny Ma island like morari or something What's i that? think you'd have to go out of your way to get to an area and, where you might need it an and you're going guard. somewhere that isn't yeah uh i'm not going to say tourist spots but it's not foreign friendly to begin with foreigners don't really just go there yeah too often yeah. unless they married somebody or they right. you know and then they then they become part of the family yeah a little bit of common sense a lot of common yeah. sense i'm not gonna say a little a lot i just of don't think sense. it's as bad as what most people think i'm yeah. not saying it's just safe everywhere i don't want to be just ignorant to that but it it's not really really that bad i just a quick random story this is where it can get sketchy i met a guy recently who owned a business in one of these sort of so-so areas he had a girlfriend down there and he was making a lot of money he was known to be a wealthier foreigner in the area and he heard about that the rebels have a list of people like targets for people to kidnap because of their wealth or whatever mm -hmm. and he found out through the grapevine that his name ended up on this hit list and he ended up moving out of there but um i think they target like just a random person riding through on a scooter I don't think they're just going after these people no i yeah. i know the story of one brit uh who got killed and robbed but he had multiple businesses and he made it a habit on payday to have all the money in his yeah. bag and he would go and pay everybody well yeah you know they're it, targeting it, that they want same money. thing in the states if if you're walking around with a lot of money and you have the same routine they're going to catch on to that certain for sure so Common sense. Don't flash your money. Don't let anybody know you have money. Janet? Janet needs more coffee. We have to take care oh, of Oh, I'm good. I, I got you sure? enough caffeine. Thank you. Need you need water? Sir. No, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I have enough to wet the whistle here. All right. Sure. Sure. Janet, Janet, not being the greatest hostess today. Yeah. No, no, she's Janet fabulous. Janet's amazing. great. I, I pick on Janet, but she, she loves me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but use common sense use common. and i've never hired an armed guard now there is the story my ex-wife she was filipina and we come to visit her family and we hired her brother and a cousin to be my driver and my gar armed guard but that was because she would tell me we don't want to give them money let them think they're earning the money yeah you know because we come from the u.s she's been working she always gives money so they earn the money so when i wanted to go into town they would drive me um maybe they're watching i didn't fool around but also uh we we're going to give them the money anyway yeah you know what a good point though with this bringing up hiring an armed guard maybe not an armed guard but hiring a tour guide or a guide or someone like that that's a great idea for any town you go to you know if it's off the beaten path and it's not a tourist yeah. area it's not a bad thing to, and if it makes you feel more comfortable, and if it is a little bit so-so of an area, then well, it's a, not hard to find that people that's would a great, jump on an that's opportunity. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, because they know everybody. Hopefully, yeah. you know they know everybody. Yeah, and you're going to get by 
you know, he's going to say, no, don't go in that store. Yeah. Or, or he's going to say, this is the kind of store you're going to like. And it so. wouldn't cost that much. That's no. the thing to hire someone for a day to be your guide. 20 bucks. Like, that's it. Yeah. That's it. 20 bucks. Easy. And, it's and you have it. someone to talk to. For sure. You yeah. know, it's a good way to meet people too. They introduce you to people. I want to back up a little bit as far sure. as the shyness comment and meeting someone comment. I've met someone recently that um, he got involved with some volunteer work. He got involved in the community. And a big thing about, you know, meeting a Filipina here is the shyness, the trust, the caution. But if you're involved in the community and you're not focused on meeting someone and you just start doing something to help out with something, all of a sudden he said, there were families and people that wanted to introduce him to their daughter, to their cousin, to their niece, whatever. And it, he said it came on rapidly after he put a few days in of like, he's not there to just hook up. He's not there mm -hmm. with bad intentions. Yeah. And, they, um, they get all of a sudden, you. you're, they all want to be your friend. They all want to introduce you because they're like, all right, he's a good guy. He's a good foreigner. You're the prize now, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And if you can prove that you're there with good intentions. Come get off the plane with a good heart, open mind and a good heart. You, yeah. You'll do all right. <clears throat> Let's see. Hello from the U.S. Is there a UPS store in Tab Tabalaran? I don't know. For advanced like shipping UPS. press. Um, I don't think UPS. You can, they have a LBC, uh, which is uh, a delivery company with a ballot buy-on boxes. And uh, you have to address it to someone. I don't know if they hold it for you, depending how long. Uh, if you know where you're going to live, fill up the ballot buy-on boxes and, and send it to yourself. Uh, send it 30 days out so you're here, you know, two to four weeks before it arrives. And uh, but just make sure you're going to be there or you're going to forfeit everything in the box. Mike, you know a lot of stuff. You should start a YouTube channel to help people. I should start here. a YouTube channel. Chad, how many years do you expect to stay there without leaving? Maybe. Do you expect to be permanent? Oh, man, that's a good question. I think about this a lot. Like, it's changing constantly because when I first came to the Philippines, it was like, I'm going to escape my monotonous life for nine months and see what happens. And then I go back home and then it's like, I'm going to get back to the Philippines. I couldn't get back to my normal life. And um, so now I've been here for another five months. It seems to be continuing on. It seems to be getting closer to being like my, my new home with the U.S. and Canada just being a place to visit once or twice a year. But I haven't committed to like a permanent setup here. And um, so we'll see. And I want to travel the area, like the region too. Hit up Thailand, hit up Vietnam and some other places. But I would, I'd call it semi-permanent with no plan of changing that anytime soon. Um, any day he's going to meet that girl. She's going to draw him into the province and we'll never that see him again. That could change everything, right? Yeah, change everything. <laughs> but I was in China back in 1999. Wow, that's a long time ago. As at the tourist attraction, many of the Chinese wanted to take pictures of me and other Americans who were with me. Yeah, they they don't do that here until you get to meet them and uh, get to know them. Then they'll do selfies. But uh, we're not that much of a rarity here as back maybe in 1999. Do you think the U.S. Uh, will boomerang and dating will get hot here for men? Because of so many guys leaving? I don't know. I, long, long time from now. No, nah, I, I, I don't think so. I think the, the movement of is there and it's there to stay. Um, it's just the, the awareness of all the different, I want, I don't want to use but I'm going to use the, word, the minority type people, you know, the LGBC, they're not a majority, they're a minority. But as they gain more uh, independence, they, they feel stronger. Uh, and the women, they're getting great jobs. You know, a lot of women make more money than men. You see more and more stay-at-home daddies now. So uh, I don't think it's going to change for older guys. What areas or what approach do the guys suggest to meet a good quality woman? Slow That's down, take your question. time. Yeah. yeah. What areas or what approach? Um, it's such a good question, man, because it's, it's no longer, I don't know if it ever was easy, but it's definitely not an easy place. I think that there's a, so much hype about coming to the Philippines because of crappy dating back home. And you watch videos and you see, you know, an amazing couple like Mike and Janet and other people that I know 
possibilities here. It's not easy to find. Um, I think online is tricky, but there's pros to that. But I think 90% of the girls online, you're just going to spin your wheels with the wrong girl. Um, what is the best way to do it? I think to back up the point that I made about get involved in the community. That's a great Don't point. come here with, I got to meet a girl. I want to meet a girl. And you're just looking around. I don't think that's the right approach. I think that if you can focus on other things and let it happen naturally, I'm learning this, being patient, not trying to just make something happen too quick. I think that's the right approach. The way, the way I look at it guys and Chad, Chad's a different animal. Uh, he's traveling. It's going to be hard for, in my opinion, to meet that long-term relationship because he's here for a week. Oh, and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. Doesn't make it. If easy. you find the town city that you want to live in, you make your home there, you get established there. It, it It's like getting involved with the community. You're established. People see you at the market every day. They see you at the store every day. You're going to be easier to meet these women uh, because you made this your home and you're not leaving. You know, their biggest fear is they'll meet you. They'll have a relationship with you. And then three weeks later, you're on a plane and never coming back. I think if if someone can live in a town that's not like like Dumaguete, like you said, it's not the best place to meet a girl. You can get lucky and meet someone here, yeah. like you did. But the opposite would be, let's say, even like CDO, Kagai and Oro. So it's got the infrastructure for finding a nice place to live. And the big difference is there's really not a lot of foreigners there at all. So yes. it's just an odds thing, right? Yeah, so now you're in a town where you can live comfortably and not have, let's just say competition or even like a mindset that changes in a town like this when Filipinas are dating different foreigners and they're talking to other Filipinas and they're like, oh, I'm with this foreigner and oh, and this guy's just giving me all kinds of money. And it just starts to change the, the psyche of the girls that you're meeting. Or then there's a lot of girls that are just shy away completely because there's just this overwhelming presence of foreigners and they're trying to come at them and talk to them. You don't have that dynamic in a CDO, for example. Even a Davao city, I think, is better, from what I understand, because there's just not so many foreigners. foreigners. And then the, then the mindset of, okay, I'm going to live here for a while. I'm going to not just try to focus on meeting someone. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to do things, and I'm going to help my neighbor with this. And all of a sudden, you're, you're starting to meet people naturally, and people trust you. And now people are going to introduce you. Think, and I have never done that because I'm like Mike said, I'm on the move all the time, and I'm trying to do online. And you know, you think you're you're matching with someone good, only to find out, you know, something. You yeah, realize yeah. it's not what you're looking for. That's a whole other conversation. Like, there's so whole, many the variables to consider. Um, I'm rambling here, but the other thing is really know what you're looking for and be strict with yourself with that. Like if you have this criteria, stick with it. There's a lot of distractions here. You could start going down the wrong path over and over again because something shiny, right? This cute yeah, girl oh my God, she's waving at you, you're looking at you, you meet her online and you're like, I know this is not what I'm looking for, but oh, she's cute. I'm just going to chat with her. And then you end up maybe even go and meet her and all this stuff. And now you've just wasted all that time where if you had just patiently stayed in one place for the lack of you know, another analogy, start volunteering somewhere yeah. or another example. And then next Visit thing you church. know, go to church, if whatever, you're church going back, yeah. whatever it is, the same thing, but expectations. Now, guys, when you come over here, you're going to think, man, I want to hook up with a 10, you know, the, you know, the, the numbers Good game, point. I, you're so much better off with a six looking wise, but she's a five or it, you know, with everything she gives you and makes you feel and how she cares for you, that she becomes an 11 or 12 or 13. Look at the total package. Mm -hmm. Just don't Huge look at the point. outside yeah. packaging unless you're just here for vacation and you want to have a great time, yeah. enjoy your life, and then go on back home. That's yeah. two different animals that we're talking Those about. guys, they're like, oh, this is a place where I can get a hottie that's like in her 20s. And you hear about this and you yeah. see it. And then that becomes the focus yes. and they ignore the seven or whatever, or whatever number you want to give 10 years older than this. Yeah. Young hot They're not all, uh, you know, uh, beauty queens here. They're very pretty girls. They're, they're very beautiful women because of their look, the, the, their thinness, you know, and uh, they're, some are very athletic and, 
their smile and their personalities, they, they just blossom. And they're not all the bathing suit models, you know, the big this and the nice this. They're just good, wholesome, and they are beautiful, but they're good, wholesome women out here. And you have to look at the complete package yeah. for long-term happiness. Yeah. You know, remember the old saying, uh, if you marry a, a beautiful woman, that you're always going to worry she's going to be cheating on you. You know, you're fighting off the guys. Uh, marry somebody ugly, they won't cheat on you. Here, it, it isn't ugly, but drop your expectations on the look, you know, and the age. Just try to find someone that's perfect for you. You know, it's, it's really, really it's good advice. That's for sure. A lot of people get distracted by that. When I was shopping with a Filipina with me in a mall, and I had a other, oh, I had other Filipinas offer me their numbers when checking out at the register. Crazy there sometimes. You're a hell of a man, dude. No one's ever offered me a number when I'm with Janet. That has never happened. Uh, have you forgotten America is now corporate sponsored hate and we just want to get, yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know about corporate sponsors. Uh, Chad, what's your thoughts on dating sites and having a long distance relationship going to the Philippines? Yeah, I mean, dating sites. Let's see. I, I've i been using um, a couple, Christian Filipina and uh, Pina Love I've used. Another one is, uh, uh, man, what's the other one? It's been a while. Well, those are the two that I've been using mainly. Long distance relationship. I think the biggest thing to consider with that is how long you're in a LDR for. For me personally, it's not real until I've met that person and spent time with that person. So I think an LDR for any more than you know, a couple of months or something like that, I just think that, I don't know, guys, you got to be careful. I know a lot of people will do an LDR, but I've heard nightmare stories of like, yeah, I was, you know, chatting with her for a year and had all these big plans. So many things can change. Who knows if she's talking to other guys and most guys are doing the same thing. You yes. know, they're chatting with multiple girls. I just don't think it's real. I don't think there's much to, don't put all your eggs in that basket and don't commit to anything until you've spent time in person. Things can change drastically after spending you know, a couple of days together and getting to know them and their true intentions. And if the chemistry is even there, if the compatibility is even there, it's just completely different when you're together. You have a lot of expectations. It's like going on a blind date back in the States. Oh man, I, you know, I hope she's good. And everybody's telling me she's what a good girl she is. Yeah. And the expectations are high. And same thing in a long distance relationship. You're fulfilling some needs sometimes of loneliness, somebody to talk to, someone to share stories with, you know, your life, their life. And that's fine. You know, you meet somebody and, uh, but when you get here and you, and you meet them, uh, things can change. Like Chad was saying, and don't, I'm going to have to stick with this one story. Don't have them meet you at the airport. I'm sorry. Get, get to the airport, get to your hotel or Airbnb, take a shower, get a good night's sleep and then meet them the next day. You know, and go into it with your eyes wide open. For sure. Um, this is actually quite common. A lot of Filipinas, they want that though. Like they, yes. they have this in mind where they'd actually prefer to meet someone in their own country through a dating site, you know, become boyfriend, girlfriend, like literally commit to each other before you've even met. And if you're already here in the Philippines, a lot of girls are like, well, now, now you're already here. Now you've dated a bunch of other Filipinas. So they want someone that's like committing to them and they're coming here to see them. So there, that can be a benefit but that can also be, you just have to be aware of that. Like I noticed it right away when I was here and I was matching, Oh, you're already, you're already here in the Philippines. How many girlfriends you have? Yeah. How many you have? They just, they might not even continue chatting with you at yeah, that point. Mm -hmm. that, that, that will just rule out some, not all, but that's definitely a thing. Janet throws that at me sometimes. We'll be sitting around and go, <laughs> How, does Mike have girls chatting? Mike has many girls. Yeah. You know, they, they hold that in the, and I'm sorry, they hold that in the back of their mind yeah. that they're in competition with everybody you And it's a Filipino thing. thing. Yeah, you could be back in the U.S. dating 100 girls. They're not, they they're not as worried about that. They're worried about other it's Filipinos. here in the Philippines. Yeah. That's um, definitely true. Oh, Filipino Cupid. That's the other thing. Another okay. site. I, if you're here in person, 
I'm going to tell you, get on Tinder. I think that is a great site. It's different than back home. Back home, it's more of a hookup site, you know, here. I'm not, yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. I just go by experience, but I think there's possibilities on there. Too. What you need to do when you're talking to them online here, meet them right away. Don't draw this out over two, three weeks. If you're here yeah. in the Philippines, just be chatting people who are geographically suitable to you. They're they're in the area. I agree with that too. One thing you will notice though, like even to like video call with them, a lot of girls are, the shyness comes into play again. It does. And if you want to do a video call with them, a lot of them will shy away from that. They'll shy away from meeting. It's weird. Like a lot of Filipinas, they're okay with LDR and they'll do it for a long time if they feel they're connected with you. Where us guys, foreigners, we, we want to meet right away. And that's something that I'm still juggling as far as online goes. A lot of them are just, you got to take your time with it. I, mean, I, don't know if, I don't know if I like that. Michael, yes, yeah, and Lee Chan. I love Lee Chan. Uh, do I know any success I do. stories? There you go. Not oh, okay. Not the matchmaking event. Sorry, yeah, but I have a friend that uh, Miguel. He, yeah. I interviewed him on my channel. Yeah, great guy. Yes. I know Miguel. Yeah. Um, Just had a baby. Had a baby boy. Huh? In June. Due in June. Yeah. Okay. But gonna be having a baby. Did he have? Did he have one? Anyways. Mm -hmm. Born affair. That's where he met Michelle. Yeah. And um he raves about it. Uh don't know about the matchmaking events. That's its own thing. But he did the, you know, the matchmaking where they they met, they match profiles and fell in love right away. Every every dating site, you're gonna find success stories and you're gonna find right. horror stories. It's your own personal experience and and how you deal with it. Hello, guys from California. Question for Chad from traveling all 47. Yeah, the same age, no bad habits, simple person, no health problems. Is 1200 enough? And where have you lived the cheapest there? Okay, is 1200 enough to travel around the Philippines? That makes it pretty tough. I'd say no, but that depends on your expectations and your lifestyle. And if you're willing to eat, you know local food and if you're not picky with that and if you're not picky with where you're staying and you're just budget all the way you can because filipinos live on way less than that but there's no air conditioning there's no comfortable bed there's you know the food is going to be majority white rice with a little topping and you order like one side instead of you know many yes but probably no and I traveled around. I did a budget for my first trip. I was here for nine months. That also depends on if you're with someone, if you're going to be dating, if you're going to be traveling with another, with a girl. So my, my nine months that I was here, I averaged, this includes like some dental work and just things that might come up while you're traveling. So it literally includes everything, health insurance, 2300 per month is what I was spending. I was traveling everywhere. I had a Filipino with me for a lot of it. Um, it included all the extras, all the unknowns, and I did not worry about money. I was getting three massages a week. I was staying in decent places. I was traveling, like I said, quite a bit. Some of these touristy areas are more expensive. Um, I could have budgeted that more for sure. But 1200s would be tough. 1200s is tough. Yeah. You definitely need savings. And traveling is the expensive part. Can you live somewhere? where you know you're paying 200 a month rent and a lot easier it's not in a really nice part of town maybe you know, farther to travel into town and you're taking trikes or you're walking um it can be done but every if that's all you have you're going to have a better life here than you have back home on 1200 bucks but if you have more and you're just going to budget 1200 it's going to be tough it's going to be tough uh, I really don't want to tell anybody what, what can or cannot work because I know a guy that lives on 800 a month. Yeah, it's expectations. Yeah. What are you willing to do? How he doesn't to go stuff? anywhere. He walks yeah. and he eats rice and dried fish. And I'm yeah. not going to eat a, a normal lunch is a cup of rice and a couple pieces of dried fish or, or a hot dog. And I'm not talking about American hot dog either. Uh, a hot dog. And that, that's their lunch. or one piece of chicken, Krispy King, a right. cup of rice and two pieces of chicken, yeah. 100 pesos or something. It can be done. It can be done, but is it what you want? And, yeah. Uh, 
come here and try it out with a plan of going back if it doesn't work out is the best I can yeah. say for him that. That's the toughest question people ask me. Andrew, hey, buddy, how you doing? Mike and Chad and Jan, I love your videos. Philippine women are the 45 best. 45 years. Have you been married to? I've been married to one for 45 years. Best move I've ever made. That's yeah, awesome. you, that's the golden ticket. When, you, when you're together that long together, that's like awesome, man. Paul K., better to find a middle-class girl with a good family uh, established as a family will determine your future. And province girls will be poor and family will have a lot of needs. That depends yeah. on so many things. Yeah, that, that's 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 a tough one there. I'll use it's Janet's family. It's not I, untrue. She, yeah, it's not untrue. And if you let yourself. And that's I think it. all this happens in the first month. When when you show it's up, if you start showing off your money and you go, oh, man, you, you don't have a refrigerator. Let me buy you a refrigerator. And then you settle down with the girl. And now the family's always asking you for everything. Well, you established you're the rich foreigner. If you come in and just be humble, like when you go visit them, you just take them a roasted chicken for 200 pesos to share in the meal. That's your portion of the meal. Uh, you're setting up that you're not that rich. And don't be flashing money to take care of all their problems. And Don't even, yeah, yeah. no talk on money or... Tell your girl, you know... Until for a while. once you're locked in to the girl, yeah, she needs to know everything. But when you're just dating, you know, let the appearances be that money's tight. Money's too tight. You don't need to impress the girl with money. I think a lot of foreigners fall into that trap early on and they want to they want to impress and they know right away, like the fact that they're a foreigner with money, that they want to use that as part of their their angle to, you know, win someone over. Yeah, and you, it's the wrong way to go. I know a guy, he invited the whole family, 25 people out to dinner the first day he was here. Yeah. Well, of course, you're going to pay for it all. He said he was shocked nobody offered to chip in. But now you've established, you're the rich guy, man. You can afford to buy us all dinner in a restaurant. Don't do that. Don't hide your wealth. Just like driving around the provinces. Don't be flashing a lot of money, you know. Have one, have your big money somewhere, but have little money. So when you go to get gas or something, you're only pulling out like a thousand pesos and you're buying the gas. You're not pulling out, you know, 20,000 pesos. It's and, a really good way to determine the intentions of someone too. Yes. From the beginning, if you take that approach and if you see a little bit of disappointment or if they're suggesting you stay at a nicer place or these are all things to consider as far as potential red flags you know yes. like good ones don't care about that stuff all women are the same wherever you are yeah there's good women bad women everywhere uh i'll agree with that but there there are differences uh who the hell wants to go back to the 50s well uh i think i'm living like in the 50s here rick a is largely responsible for that lie about girls coming at <laughs> rick yeah ricky has a lot of uh, comments that got you to watch his video. So uh, it worked. Uh, I spent six months chatting online with my Filipino before I came here. Yeah, a lot of people. I chatted six months online with a girl that took me for a lot of money, too. So that's the it, thing. There is no like one way. There's no like, there's way. not one way to meet. You can meet online, you can meet boots on the ground, you can get lucky, you can chat for two years and come here. Yeah. Um, what's his uh, Patrick and Alona? I interviewed them. Four years before they met. They are the happiest couple ever. Check that video. It's actually really, I'm not trying to push my channel, but it's a really interesting story. He really is pushing his channel. Yeah. Check him out. Chad's got Why some... aren't you flashing my channel like constantly? In a while I'm not. Guys? I'm not. <laughs> Chad's got a great channel. Uh, since he made his first visit to Dumaguete, um, he interviewed uh, Paul Old Dog, Monty, uh, a few other people. He's been on my channel. He's interviewed me. He's he's made some very good good videos and human interest videos that yeah. anybody thinking of coming to the Philippines just experience other people's uh, their experience and what they did right or they did wrong yeah. doesn't mean that's the way to do it but it just it helps helps you clear in your head totally. get other what stories. to expect yes I'm gonna escape and come right back he and Chaz leaving us I don't know where he's gonna go because he has to go to the restroom he has the to ER. go where is the CR it's over there. Is there one over this way? 
So it's cut through there. This is okay here. My cut. son is there. It's not We're cut through. You don't. We're gonna we're gonna rearrange furniture here. <laughs> there we go. It's slim. We're having some technical difficulties here, guys. Hang in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let me see where we're at here. I'm gonna get through some of these comments and questions. I think I've lost the no. Uh, I think I lost where we were at. Uh, oh. And uh We're now, guys. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was right here. All women are the same wherever you are. Uh, so we're in. The, who wants to go back to the fifties? Can of beans. Can't get that to pop up. Uh, I don't know. Can of, cool. Okay, there we go. Angie, we just talking to Angie. Yeah, Rike, we did that. Uh, You. Whose side are you with? Eh, whose side? Eh. Whose sides are you with? Okay, I don't know what that question is. And we got Chad heading back. When we did chat, it was always over an hour. Okay, Phil. Yeah, I chatted with a girl for four hours straight on certain days, but she took me for a lot of money. Mike, what's the deal with being so lonely in the U.S.? I don't find it that bad. If you don't mind being alone, I didn't want to be alone. Um, hell, even a uh, 15 year different in the US. Okay, Chris. A lot of these things, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, you guys are talking to each other. The sad desperation of Western guys feeling, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Any good questions, guys? Chad has found his broke ex. Someone commented that on. Chad has found his broke uh, with with Jerry. Someone said something about that. Oh, Jerry! Multiple videos with Jerry, but it's it's not. Oh, not yeah, broke, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, like Jerry's not living broke. the dream. Yeah, Jerry's not broke, dude. He lives he lives the high life, man. He's, he's doing good. Jerry's doing good. So he means having someone, someone that I keep going to, to, I guess, for yeah, content. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a good. He's a good friend of mine. And, yeah, no, yeah. we like him. We we he's been over to the house and uh, he's a good dude. We run into him at Isle Mall. He's very happy. He's inspiring, man. Like, yeah. I love that. It's never too late. That that's kind of the 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 approach that I want people to take when it 80, comes to make decisions. Here at Just eighty can take a leap of faith. Go for it. I didn't have the balls to come here when I was forty. Think of the balls it takes to come here at 80. Yeah, never been on a plane before. You know, you know, you, you don't have the physical strength and the dexterity and the ability to do so many things people want. I wanted to make a point. I was thinking yeah. about this with Jerry, and it all it's all happening so fast for Jerry, and he's now in a relationship. That's the latest video that I did with him. He also has the mindset. He knows he's 81. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to waste time. He was like, she's nice. There are a lot of possibilities here there's probably thousands of possible relationships here but a lot of guys me included fall in the trap of like trying to find the one and being picky and there's something to be said about just making a decision and going for it so jerry did that jerry's just going for things he is living it and he's so happy and i think you can find happiness yes with so many different scenarios as far as what town you live in as far as what girl you're dating um so i'm learning that from jerry and he's that is one happy guy. Yeah, Jerry's Jerry's great. Antonio, good morning. He's in Davao City. When if you go to Davao, you want to look up Antonio. Uh, right. Yes. Hey Ted, how you doing? World Zoom things are not that bad in the U.S., don't you think? Okay. I don't know if that was the real World Zoom or not. Uh, Janet, we're going to end up calling you Mama Janet, Dad Mike, with all your great advice you give us. Uh, we're like your kids. Yeah, but you <laughs> Just don't borrow money, guys. <laughs> we don't have, we are poor. We are poor. Let's see. There's a conversation going. There on. is, and there. I'm trying to. Not sure what it is. I'm trying to get by there. Well, there's Manny C. How you doing, Manny? I'm not going to. Are these a lot of regulars? Yeah, they're regulars. Try to say hello. I've never met Sunshine Shoulders. Calvin yeah. Rory. I have. I have. Have you met him? Yeah. He lives north of here, right? Yeah, he was I've in been, town. Uh, Last February, yeah. we met him. Uh, 
Shopping in the supermarket. Do you need cash? No. 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 We if use it's our, a grocery store. We use our card. debit card. We use, yeah. we use our uh, Philippine debit card. Any decent size supermarket. I any think. yeah, any middle class, middle size city and up. Yeah. Um, but always have the cash on you because their machines break or in they don't have internet connection or something. So yeah, uh, I've seen that already happen. Uh, Chad, have you met Sunshine Shoulders? I consider we'll him the word. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, yeah. Haven't met he does him, a yeah. lot of live streams now. He does he does video. He's been around a long time. Yeah, he's very you know he's successful. Any any talk? I got this in the hot seat from him. Oh yeah. Yeah, he uh, when he interviews people in the past. I don't know about recently. But he went to interview uh, Marianne and It's Wang here in a year ago uh, at uh, Ground Zero. And he said, all right, girls, but I'm going to put you on the hot seat. And that's where <laughs> that's where I got that. So copyright infringement, I guess. It seems that there's so many of these guys will not even acknowledge that they're obese. Oh, yeah, I'm heavy. I don't know about obese, but Larry. Hello, Janet. Coming in November. Come, there you Bye. go. We'll see Get you soon. Over here. Gio, is that you? I think Giovante. Yeah, Gio. this Gio in. I'm going to skip down, guys. So hopefully, I don't miss many. Seven years. Yeah. Wrapped in a towel. You're in the room. Towel drops. What will turn you on? Seven years. If a, a seven-year-old woman wrapped in a towel in your bedroom, towel drops, what would turn you on? Come on. Come on. I don't know. I don't know. He's not, he's 40. You know, I'm 46. 70. Yeah, 46. I'm I'm 70. Uh, what would Fidelity turn me on? If, you know, a big turn, if she could reach all the way to the ground and pick that towel up, would be very impressive. <laughs> impressive, but would it turn you on? Physically fit like that, maybe? Uh, Fidelity reimburses too. I don't know what that is. When you land at the airport, how much should you exchange in U.S. Use for a cab? I exchange to use for a cab. I exchanged uh, 200 uh, U.S. at the airport in Manila when I landed mm -hmm. just to get me to my hotel. And yeah, I max but, uh, out ATM, get uh, 10,000 yeah. pesos, yeah. about 200. Yeah, at least not if you brought cash with them oh, and he okay. had all, only U.S. money. Um, oh, gotcha. I wouldn't do more than 500. I think that's plenty to get you around. Mm -hmm. And ask him to break some of those 1,000 peso bills down smaller for you. Let's see here. YouTube blogger. Yes, we are. All of us here. I'm going to skip some of these guys. No, I'm not here. Sorry. Oh, okay. Say he's Geo. Jan, I love your hair right yeah. now. Janet's hair is a mess. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we've been going on here. I'm going to try and get through a lot of this. Uh, oh, like, that's a nice comment. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Greetings Thank from. You. Oh, I've never been there. I want to go check that out and show people through your channel life changing advice. That's great, man. Okay. Thanks for saying that. Hello from Finland. How's the weather in Finland right now? Let's see here, Gio. So USA, USAA, the best bank when you open new checking account. I'll give you two thousand credit, credit card. card. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, free, free credit. Mike, 70 is not that old. I didn't say that. I'm just old. Yeah. Oh, look, look what's in the room. We are 30s, old. 40s, 69, you know. And I'm doing all the work here. They're just sitting back, taking up camera time. So besides ATM machines, can I open up a world we met and send money? Yes, that's what I have. Thanks, Lily. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's how you would do it. And a GCash. Ja uh, people send Janet money on GCash from overseas. I don't yeah. have, but she has. Transfer it to your bank by GCash? GCash, you know, it's it's like uh, your phone holds the money and you can transfer it anywhere you want. Uh, let's you see. Number. <laughs> this is a Filipina and she's uh, from Tallahassee, oh, but living in Boston right now. Right. Well, welcome Sandy. to the channel. Austin. Dynamic Duel. Thank you for the live, guys. Yeah, you all know we're coming up on the 11 the top of the hour. We'll be out of here. Uh, then what? You have a heart attack here. Then what? I don't know. Die. 
Larry, I'm in the process of making the uh, move to the Philippines June and July. Uh, one. A lot of apostles you need. Yeah, G you got to get Giovanni is going to do the SRRV mm. and he's getting his uh, DD 214 and, you know, his benefit mm -hmm. letter from Social Security, all apostille. So when he comes here, you know, he can get hold of Heidi and just give her all the information, all the documents and get his permanent residence visa. Let's see. I'm going to skip a lot of these guys. There we go. Sober travel. How you doing, buddy? Uh, you missed meeting Chad when you were in Dumaguete uh, next time. Uh, great collaboration. For sure. Yeah, he was, he was cool to meet. A lot of these guys uh, that we've met here. If you're a veteran, yeah. I just said that, Giovanni. Uh, do they have international accounts? Citibank does. All these big banks do, but uh, international account requires a lot of deposit. Some of them were 75,000 US or more to open an account. Uh, let's see, I know you and Janet go to Duma to Cebu via Tabalera. Yeah. Is it faster that way or is it possible Duma to Luan and then to Cebu City? Oh, you can fair. do that, but you, you're taking the bus. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to take the bus. I want to take the ferry and uh, land in Cebu yeah. about a 100 peso cab ride. Tech Billeron just a short stop. Yeah, it's on the way. About a half hour stop total. Hi, guys. I'm eventually coming here. Can I use my U.S. bank Is debit card? Yeah. And get pesos? What? Can you do that? I don't do it. I've never yeah, done that. I use, uh, yeah, before I was using Bank of America debit card at the okay. ATM. Yeah, you'll use your, your local ATM card. But watch for fees. We were talking about that earlier. If you get a, there's certain... Charles Schwab, for example, there's no ATM fees. Mm -hmm. they, they add up if you don't have a an account with one of those. Yeah. Let's see. Robert, he came here, he used a Citibank card. Yeah, they take Citibank cards here. You know, any of the big banks, you know, they're going to take. Yeah, absolutely. Although I noticed with my Bank of America, some ATMs, it only works with certain ATMs. And I haven't, I didn't figure that out. But with my Charles Schwab, I haven't had any, any issues. Any ATM, no fees. Let's see. Yeah, there Dave just mentioned that. Giovanni, I'm sorry, guys. There's so many comments here. I did jump. Larry, you jumped over to Janet's channel. Cool. How many, Janet, how many you got watching there? We got 155. Wait. No one's watching. Ah, we won. Yeah, we, <laughs> nobody. She has 20. Let's see. Uh Chad from Florida. How do I contact? Want to fish? Mm -hmm. Moving okay. permanent. Thank you for your blogs. Hope to see you both in Dumaguete. Uh, that comment of how to con I have an email address on my channel if you want to yeah. contact. Yeah, check out his channel in the description uh, here or in the uh yeah. He has contact information on his channel. Let's see here, Larry my so many people talking to each other. You need to speak that. Lou. How you doing, buddy? I had a great trip to the Philippines, meeting my girlfriend, and planned our trips Lou. corresponding yeah, with Chad. Chad with Lou. There you go. Yeah, so, he's been having a heck of a time. Yeah, good time or bad time? No, good time. Great to yeah. hear that. Great yeah, to yeah. hear. Philip says, uh, "Good life with Chad, and you like his interviews. He has a unique style." Oh, that thank I'm, you, Philip. I think he's very good at what he does. Looking Thank forward you. to my next trip over snowed again today. I'm <laughs> asking why we met him. He brought us some rain reindeer sausages. Oh, really? Yeah. That, I, that, was, that was cool. Was, we had uh, dinner in the condo. I yeah. miss that Alaskan salmon, though. Yeah. Uh, just what we need, more bloggers. I can't even get, go get coffee without being messed up by bloggers. Yeah, we do mess. Yeah. yeah I, I you know, rampage the... If you yeah. know, but they have you can watch movies on YouTube too. So if you don't want to watch a blogger, you can watch movies. And I think he TV. means though, like just going to get a coffee. We're just we're everywhere now. We're in the Philippines? Really? You know, I don't know. Tell me what coffee shop you go to that has a lot of bloggers in it that mess you up. Uh that I want to know. Because I go to a lot of coffee shops and I see a lot of bloggers there, but they're just minding their own business. Not everybody has their camera out and blogging. In the coffee shops, not usually in the you coffee know, shops. No, it's 
usually of all the bloggers in Dumaguete area, I think there's what? more in Ayala Mall. There's a lot there. But you know the vibe that I'm finding? Like, man, I just, it's easy to make friends. Everyone's so positive. <laughs> like I meet other vloggers, but then I meet people that know the vloggers. And next thing you know, it's like this social hour and everyone's just having this good conversation. There are all these oh, people who I find it to be positive. To travel. You know, they, they, they want to meet us because they saw us here and then they yeah. become friends. You it's know? more like, yeah, it's more friendly. I, that's my experience. All that. right going to get picked on here mike you need to start a diet get the weight off you're going to feel great i went from 387 to wow, wow that's a lot of fat i can't do the Gastric surgery sleeps. yeah i can't do that god bless you for doing that man that, that's a big drop off good for you you're just throwing out there and lose weight <laughs> okay this one i gotta answer mike why do you keep saying 70 years old why did you let your health go my health is fine i didn't let my health go uh, you're saying I'm se 70 years old, you know, 70 years old. The average lifespan is what 72. So I'm right it's there. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's not much, not much more than that. 75, 76, but I'm in the, the last quarter of my life. I know that I'm no fool. Chad, that was a good video update with Jerry. I yeah. I'm sure there are many smiles watching that. Yeah. Thanks, John. That, that was good. I love that guy and he's just always good to sit down with and now everyone is like anxiously waiting the next update for jerry he's got more coming up more updates for his plans brian says watch out for the cobras what samar yes. does have samar cobra so be careful out there no mm -hmm. kidding all right i didn't know that they what found that? king cobras in toledo really so what? Cool. In the mountains of Cebu. Not, uh, not Toledo, it's Delegate. And, yeah, and somebody died in Delegate, which is on Cebu yeah. Island. They From got a cobra bite? Yeah, they got yeah. bit by the cobra and died. Holy <laughs> shit. I have to get ready for bed. All right, Larry, All right. take care. Larry, thanks some for people, tuning in. Some people have to work and keep that money in Social Security so That's I can right. get that check every month. Um, okay, uh, Mama, Mama Janet, Janet, we will like and subscribe. Janet, always promoting uh total living and married to a traditional filipina went over 35 years. years lived all over the states now living in cebu there's so many good stories more good i love the good stories i love the good story this is the link guys chad foster explores Thanks, anybody Janet. wants to check them out uh two of my favorite youtube stars jerry is one of the best things chad has done i love Thanks, the Rick. story uh yeah chad chad does a great job keep watching yeah. his stuff man he's a good dude just my first marriage was to an american thank god my second wife is a filipino i wish i would have learned after one i had more than one more than two leite is very nice leite is nice i can't wait to get there i can't wait i've been wanting to go to leite let's see somebody asked and i'm not going to show somebody any comments on the situation in uh, uh doom again i'm going to say no comments from us other than it's not what people think. It's, it's not, not much, there's not much drama here. There's you really guys not. are talking more about it than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's good it's morning, really guys good. in the Philippines and good evening to all others. Hey Michael, how you doing? So many Michaels. Um, let's see here. Eric, this is Eric. He's in Cebu. Does Jan have any opinions on the subject, subject. What's well so many different she has many opinions eric and you know that eric was on the peace channel yeah. oh really yes he's a she superstar bring in too many uh we have a superstar in the house that is huge we're so jealous of you let's see here Yes, I'm very lucky to have uh, Janet, Tim. I say that every day. I count my blessings. Uh, let's see some about Diplog. Guys, Diplog is my city. Diplog is not bad pre-NPA small town. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, this, uh, Diplog this is, is a cool, cool city. Yeah. Shout out to Diplog. What time is it travels? Thanks for the super chat. Now nice. I got to give half to Chad. $2. Yeah. yeah I want yeah. that. And you want your half. buck. <laughs> Most places I don't like that anywhere in the world do stupid stuff and get stupid done to you. Yes. Yes, that is so yeah. true. Dating sites, 95% scammers, if you let it be. 
Yeah, I, scammer, the term scammer gets thrown around a lot because a lot of times there's just guys that are handing, they're asking for money and the guy gives it to them. Um, but I agree that a high percentage don't have genuine intentions. Yes. 20 seconds to answer each comment and go. I normally do that, but Chad, Chad, Chad has a lot to offer. So we're going to listen, <laughs> listen to him. I'm running time. out. I'm going on caffeine and yeah. cookies right Hello, now. Hello, Mike and Chad. Usually I'm in an hour late. All right, Joe. You Carter. made it to the tail end. Yeah. I'm, 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 Is, we've been at this for an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up at the wow. top of the hour. So I'm going to when you're having fun. Guys, I'm going to be really sorry if I don't click on your comments. I'm going to try and uh, get through these. There's so many. Great place to visit. My scooter. General. Oh, cool. General Santos all the way at East Coast. That's where we're looking to go. I'm excited about that. I've heard good things about General Santos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see here. We'll check on Christopher. I had a question for Chad, and you pulled it, Mike. Uh, attraction. Attraction and indifference. Age relationship. Simple question. Lost too much. Hold on. I want to answer that, but I'm yeah. trying to figure out. I had a question for Chad and you pulled it, Mike. Attraction in a difference in age relationship. Simple question. Hmm. Attraction. Um, is there attraction in a difference in age? Yeah. Age, age gap is not such a big thing here as far as um, how it is in the West, as far as there being attraction. Obviously, older guys are attracted to younger girls, but I believe that younger girls uh, can be sincerely attracted to an older guy it's different here culturally as far as what they're looking for in terms of attraction security not worrying about someone being a player or a cheater or just wanting to hit the clubs like a lot of filipinos want someone that's mature emotionally mature i just interviewed uh, a girl named frechi a friend of mine and she talks about that exact thing she prefers older guys and her number one reason is she's actually very attracted to the look of an older guy she likes that look gray hair she likes the age in someone and the the wisdom. This guy, you got to grow the beard out. She likes a white no, beard on oh, the guy. No, 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 no <laughs> beard. I tried the beard. They said I looked dirty. Yeah. No, there are genuine relationships. How would you get involved in the community? Charity work, uh, a church. Uh, There's always opportunities to help out. Yeah. There's go, always a need to help. Take uh, take some donations down to the Brangy. If you live, you know, not in a big city, go to the Brangy. Make friends with the locals. Yeah, take yeah. some donations. Meet the Brangy captain. Say, you know, here, I don't know who to give it to. You know who the most needy are. In a church, too. Yeah, yeah fine. just get just get involved. Talk to your neighbors. Yeah. Uh, let's see, a Filipina and a foreigner. Hey, how you doing? We met online. Had a wonderful relationship for over a year and a half. That's our short story. It's a good story. That's cool. Yeah. Let's see. Half of the residents of my state have firearms in their homes. And we're recently mass shooting. Yeah. You know, that's in the States. Uh, yeah. That's we're, that's we're here in the Philippines. It's so one of the best things about coming here is all of that. Like, I forgot all about that. Like that toxic news culture and fear culture. It's just not here. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so different here. It's so much nicer when it comes to that. I heard okay this one I heard price dropping for homes and apartments is that the case in Duma no it's not it's going up going up here um can you find close to the hospital yes Subalon has many very nice places it's too far for me and Janet to go live but we saw many nice homes in that area at a good price close to the hospitals going to Manila in uh March and May and hopefully meet a nice girl there yeah. good luck uh, and I mean that in a positive way. Good luck. You can meet a good girl anywhere. Yeah. There yeah. are plenty of girls that live in Manila that are from the province and went there to work and provide for their families. Yes. Yeah. It's knowing how to target the good ones. Well, considered safe. Uh, we, we talked on that already. Yeah. I, I don't know that particular area of Dipolog. Overall, Dipolog is fully safe. Yeah. A lot of Mindanao is actually safe. Let's see. If they ask for money right away, bail out. Uh, you know, right, Mike and Chad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes. Hundred percent. Chad's I'm, gonna I'm, go. I'm hard no. It's, I'm, a, I'm a soft touch. See, there, there's a difference. If I haven't met you and spent time with you, and they ask for money or they start throwing out the, usually they don't ask for money. Usually it's hardships. Usually they'll just subtly throw out there, 
that the phone's not working or I, I don't have load to keep chatting or so-and-so's in the hospital. Like, you know where they're going with that. Yeah. They don't even know you and they're throwing all of their burdens on you. That's for me, it's a hard no. Why take the chance? That's right. Why take the chance? Like, you know, you're coming all this way and whether you're planning to come back to your home or you're going to live here, why take the chance that someone that's already throwing that on you and you have money? To. When, you. when when you decide you're going to look for a Philippine in the Philippines, set your parameters. You know, the, I'm not saying say, oh, I want someone between 27 and 32, but your parameters, you know, do you want them to have children or no children? Uh, do you want them to live in the yeah. province, live in the city and stick to those? And uh, that just eliminates so many other people and just get yeah. right into what you're that's looking it. for. That's the biggest thing. Stick to parameters. Have you... I don't know. The money thing for me is automatic. What do you mean you have a soft spot? So I you meet soft. online that you've never met and they're like, uh, so and so is oh, in the hospital. Can yeah, you send me money? Well, not not that part. You know, I know the hospital thing, but you know, uh, don't have rice, don't have I was an easy touch for 40 bucks. I'd send two 2K to people left and right. Even people I didn't like that much. You're absolutely uh 100 percent chat if you have a girlfriend. Uh, with a twelve hundred is pushing it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, the budget thing is the hardest question we ever get asked. You know, people ask, "Can I survive on X amount of money?" It depends. Your health, your your habits, your lifestyle. What you are you know? willing? Filipinos live happily on half of that. Yeah, but they live. So you they, can. On, they sleep on the floor, yeah. the roof, the roof. Can you, you do can that? See the stars. Can you do that? Can you eat? And they walk down the road from water. And they walk down the road yeah. from water. Can you do that? Then yes, you can. You yeah. can live in less than twelve hundred. I, I, I'm talking over you. Yeah, but I'm saying, why would you? Other than that's all the money you have. Right. That's a whole different story. Yeah. But try to live but on. You that. can find that happy medium, and you know, budget really depends on your. I'll give you this quick one before before we're out of here, guys. Jan and I tried to do a budget video for this month, and. What I did was I put our budget in an envelope and this morning we're laying in bed, getting ready to get up. And I go, Janet goes, I need to go to the bank. I go, where did all the money go? She says, I spent it. It goes fast. And that budget was 70,000 in that envelope yeah. through the course of a month. It goes fast depending on your lifestyle. And we go out to the coffee shops and for us to get two coffees and a bagel yeah. is 700. Prices pesos. have gone up here too. Yeah. Yeah. If you like a cappuccino, I, and I like going out, going, sitting down, having a cappuccino. And those places are 130 two pesos. To, two to three bucks. Yeah, that's more. Yeah. And that's only one. No refills here. Even a regular black coffee. You you don't get a free refill like Denny's. You know, so it's, it, this next month, we'll, we'll do our budget in March online. Uh, okay, well, this, this is a good one. 71, 71 bald over a week. <laughs> I have 900 a month social security. Yeah, I'm looking for a 20-year-old virgin Filipina to stay at home as my wife and cater to me, fan me down, feed me grapes. Uh, good luck. It's possible. It actually is possible. Yeah, but you're gonna live, you're gonna live at her family compound with that kind of money. Yeah, because you're not gonna be able to pay rent. You're gonna live with her family, and every nickel of that is gonna be gone in the first week. Yeah. In the first week. 20 year old virgin Philip. watch go to paul's channel go to one of his really old videos expat john going broke in the film a 71 year old has a better chance i'm not even yeah. exaggerating with that 20 year old virgin than a 46 year old yeah. looking to meet a 20 year old virgin trouble is when you're 71 years old that 20 year old virgin's still going to be a virgin when you're 75 yeah i think so when you get up in no 70, funny business, it doesn't really work anymore. There's something weird about um, the like, comfort level of a young girl, though, with an older, older guy. Yeah, she is, but be, they're going to feel safer. They're going to feel his budget doesn't allow for Viagra or anything. There's no, there's <laughs> no, no room. There's no room there. Yeah. You know, there's no room. Yeah, the budget makes it tough. And but the gonna... age and the you can find a young if you're 70 and you want a 20 year old. It, it's not going to be easy, but it's possible. Yes, yes, it's possible. Oh, look at all these comments. Yes, good luck. 
Good luck. Did I leave? Well, I was hundred. Yeah, the, guys, I'm going to blow right through th these comments here. Uh, uh, the O for hello. Thank you, Howard. Uh, hi, guys. Happy Friday. Do you remember, recommend carrying a good amount of cash in your carry-on bag before you get here? I had mine in my backpack. 10, I mean, ten k US. This is like before you come. It's good to have some cash. Uh, Tony, you should. How would you feel like that? Tony, he's talking to Tony. Yeah, start your own YouTube channel, dude. It, it's it's a it's a great it's idea. Fun. Yeah, really, you can find middle class Filipino who will chase an old guy. I disagree. I disagree. Mm -hmm. Janet's family's middle class. No, I'm, there's some truth to that. Yeah, like I, the economics play into to obviously. Yeah, but the other parts play in also the dependability. The the guy's 100%. responsible. He's, it he's does. Not, and culturally, it's more normally yeah. accepted here. So. But the family will have to accept you. Young, middle-class Filipino. Yeah, the family will have to if accept you. She is a wealthy, you know, if upper middle about class girl. Upper class girl? No. They they're won't. not paying attention. They're 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 marrying a wealthy, middle upper class Filipino. Uh, and their two families will have Anything more goes here. Anything can happen here. But mm -hmm. the odds, obviously, change depending on the dynamic you're on janet's side uh i did how did that girl take you for a lot of money you married her and divorced no i got a video on that uh uh way back two hundred and fifty thousand views uh my story guys it's my story uh hey from st cloud mike i'm a graduate of both rick a's bachelor course and trump university <laughs> Well then, you you're a man of the world, man. You, you have all it's the a good combo. Right yeah, that's a great combo. <laughs> he, the Andrews in Latex. Hey, I want to go there. I don't know that town, but I'm gonna. I'm sure check it out. Why buy when you can rent? I say that about property. Oh, uh, maybe he's talking about a, a girl scooter. No, he's talking about girls. Oh, uh, good evening. Hello, good evening, Sam. Mine go uh, me. But mine boontag for us. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you guys talk in Filipino all the time. Hello, Mike and Chad. Great info. Uh, thank you, guys. Five days in Cebu. Still having uh, fun exploring the city. Lots of stuff to see and yeah. do here. Yeah, it's a mindset. Like someone like that, just loving his time. Other people will look at Cebu and look at the uh, the downside. Come here with just easygoing expectations, guys. You're gonna love it. This one here, yes, if you're a quality man, be a good man getting off the airplane, uh, land at the airport, leave all your troubles behind, leave your baggage behind, just be have an open mind and have yeah. a good heart, and That's you'll have a good time. 100%. Here. Girls want, like anywhere, they want security, especially here, security and a genuine guy with good intentions and a good heart. You just have to find a way to prove that. Dad, wifey do always happy to see me, unlike Mikey do. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing you, Ted. Does does anywhere in Cebu take cards? Many places. Yep. Many, in the mall, Marshall every stores, place. Malls, big restaurants. Any anything that is not a small local type thing. Um, but yeah, coffee shops, Starbucks, they all take it. Okay, since Calvin's a good dude. Yeah, he's all right. I don't know him that well. We'll be visiting the Philippines in September for two weeks. Yeah, we're waiting that trip, uh, Ted. Waiting, waiting on you to get here. As a long-term goal for Janet, I would buy her fractions from of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah, right. I can, I can barely buy her a loaf of bread. <laughs> I'm a new subscriber. I'm planning on moving to the Philippines soon. Thanks for subscribing, guys. Really appreciate it. everybody. Like and subscribe. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit. If you're on Janet's channel, she's trying hard to get to 3,000 subscribers. Go get over there, there, guys. Hit her up on that. You're going to make her day. Maybe she'll cook dinner for me tonight. What's the best time of the year to come visit? I like uh, March, April, May, personally. If you like sunny, warm weather, be in the water, not worry about rain. Those are my favorite three months. Cooler weather, you're going to find in more December, January, February. Yeah. If you're on SSDI, do you have to go to the U.S.? I believe you have to get all your medication and, and work done that's covered in the U.S. or U.S. territory. When you Go see your uh, practitioner and ask them. Talk to your insurance agent. I can't answer that. I don't know your disability. Hello from uh, Florida. 
Nice to see you, Chad. Oh, recently, I've been there. Recently subscribed and like your Jim. content. Appreciate that, man. Thanks for subscribing. I have my DD-214 right in my original military records here at home. All right, Ted. Hi, hi from Texas. Uh, Alan? I don't know, Alan. Let's see. Yeah, you can get charged the fees from the ATM yeah. when the foreign Charles transaction Schwab, fee. Avoid all of that. Yeah. It adds up. You don't even know it. Then I, was, I think it was 15 US every time I went to an ATM. No matter how much you took out. Yeah. No matter what. 15 bucks. And you go like, you know, it yeah. seems like every week or yeah. something. Yeah. I'm a 19-year-old Filipino looking to marry an elderly, handicapped, obese Westerner with at least a seven. Well, that other guy there that's yeah, 71. We, we know man, someone for you. He's, he's, he's looking if you're a virgin. I think you're too old, though. You got to be a virgin. 19. Gen, yeah. Too old for him. No, he said 20. Oh, he said 20? Yeah. Oh, never mind. If my plans go as they should, I will retire in December and head for the Philippines in February. Good choice. You guys need to do this more often. I'm laughing my ass off and learning important <laughs> stuff. I don't know if I can talk him to do this again. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time to do a live uh, stream. She, and I'm I'm running on caffeine and cookies, guys. Yeah, Janet a, Janet meal. still hasn't gotten up to cook him lunch yet. Heck. We're going to take him to the hideout if he's got time. It's going to be my treat at the hideout. We'll get him a, a good lunch here. Yeah, Janet, we're going to have to leave Janet at home because I can only afford two. <laughs> Click Janet first. She's in the feed. Yeah, please click Janet. Uh, hey, yeah, my yes. ATM debit card does not work. Same with mine. In local well, Charles company. Schwab, I've had no issue. Yeah. My Bank of America debit card doesn't work at every ATM. Yeah. I don't know why. So, yeah, nice for pointing that out. Yeah. You got to have backup. I always say, like, bring more than one debit card, like different bank accounts. If you, uh, I lost my one card that I had and I had no way of getting cash. Have a backup plan. Mike, what is your height and weight? I'm 5'10", 220. They say 40 uh, is the new old here in America. No, I think they say 70 is the new 30s in America. I don't know. <laughs> old is old, man. I know people who yes. are 40 who are so old and, and you know, their health is gone. And I know people who are 80 and they, they can lift more uh, weights than other guys. Alan, he said hotel. Mm -hmm. He meant condo. Uh, there are there are hotels in Macton, but he is staying at, it's called 8 Macton Newtown. I think that's the name of the condo that he's in. It's got that amazing resort pool. Mm -hmm. It's not a hotel. I know he said that in the interview, but it, there are condos there. And you can rent. You can do Airbnb there too, but mostly long term. Somebody's looking for a boxing match. Uh, they have boxing on TV every night. I watch that on ESPN. Good night, Janet. What about Mike and I? We don't get a good night? We don't, no, not we, Mike. You're not going to blow kisses at Mikey, us. Mikey, Mikey is in that Janet click. Jo that click Janet guys. all yeah. love. I guess you guys haven't heard of the fist fight. Fist fight? No, we what haven't heard fight? that. What's this fight? Mike, have you, your thoughts about the, the carnivore, carnivore diet? Way, many of them. Yeah, I did that in the U.S. It was easier here. It's hard. You know, Steaks aren't good here. They're expensive. Good steak. No. Michael, Have you seen the steak. cows here? Yes. The white cows in the field? Yes. <laughs> There's no blogging in Ground Zero. Yes, that's oh, true. Yeah. A lot that's of kids. Really a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No hide. Dude, Chris and I were planning on playing hide and seek in Leyte. That's going on. There's that, too I, many cobras in the three, bushes. Tell you a story. Two guys walked up the mountain. The one guy stopped at the tree to take a pee and he got bit. Right on the head of his really, little thing. No, you know. Way. And the guy said, Man, let me go down the bottom of the hill, call a doctor. So the guy ran down the hill, he got to the payphone, he called a doctor and said, Doctor, doctor, what do I do? The doctor said, You gotta suck all the poison out of it. The guy ran back up to the top of the mountain and said, Doctor said you're gonna die. <laughs> okay. Was that funny? I don't know. <laughs> I hope that more businesses follow suit. Okay. See, you snuck that one in. I mean, Chad, nice to see you. Just subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, Chad, thank Chad's you, got you. a great channel. Before before oh, we end this, for hyping it. Chad's channel is, is a great channel. It's a good variety. I love his um, skill at interviewing. He did two interviews with me. Watch those. And then watch the interview I did with That's him. That's what launched my channel. Yes. I'm going to give you all the credit. 
I want to check, but you know, but I want half the live stream. I want the one dollar first. All right, or the what Janet, did get? we got a dollar somewhere. <laughs> Give him one peso point. I think he got a super chat for two bucks. Sure. He he doesn't like the pe people talking about himself, but he does a great job for a young guy here in the Philippines. Great following and uh, thanks, Mike. Good good content. I mean, you know, and Appreciate clickbait it. up to Yang Yang. Man, a lot of clickbait. Hey, I I try to have make sure it relates to the content. Okay, Good to meet if you. you guys. Say so. Let's have coming to Doom in a couple of weeks. Love to meet you. Hit us up on Facebook. It's the best way to contact us. I think Jana needs some coffee. I need, I think Jana needs to get dressed so we can go out for lunch. Saw you and four other bloggers at Tom Tom's yesterday. No cameras were out. That's right. We saw you. You're going to go yeah. see Mary and uh, Shay today. Yeah, you we don't, don't have. Blog, I don't vlog at a coffee shop. Janet was live in the coffee shop. You didn't realize Janet that. Janet is the one that you got to watch out. Yeah, for. she was live while she was sitting there. But she it's just vlogs everywhere. Yeah, but you can't tell she's doing that, and um, they're very respectful. It's just a meeting place. Uh, I have, I have a patient. He's late seventies, blind, death, obese, lost leg. Da 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 da. Seventy seven hundred dollars for the welfare. Best province for him to find a new you, person. Who is that? I, I think the best place to go is North Korea with that kind of money. North yeah, Korea. I think, I think you can get, yeah, you can, you can Filipina. find that. Yeah. Yeah. And there might be one up there somewhere. Hi, good evening. Hello. Uh, Dr. Good Richman. Evening. This is for how do you get involved with the community? Go to a local school, ask what their needs are. Maybe they need equipment, a volleyball. Jan and I have to go buy a volleyball for the school here. Um, yes, great, great suggestion, Doc. Total disaster. Then talking to somebody else. I hope. Uh, whoa, Jerry, wife. Freaking wait. Uh, let's see. My late wife's uncle donated the land for the high school. Great idea. Yes, there's some very generous people in the Philippines. Um, let's see. Two hours and eleven. Yeah, minutes. yeah, guys. I am so sorry. I'm not going to be able to get through everybody's comment. I'm trying to find people we haven't talked to yet. Uh, Russell, uh, what are the pros and cons dating single moms uh, with a one-year-old baby? It seems like an asshole. Well, some obvious. I I'll, think that... Uh, I'll answer the one thing for you. Yeah. That baby's going to be sleeping in your bed for the next two to three years. When you have a one-year-old, doesn't the baby sleep with you? Janet in the Philippines. That's that's normal here. Yeah, yeah it's this is different. It, it, she's going. That baby's going to be on her hip everywhere you go. Like, Depends on what. Yeah, if you're looking to have freedom and at flexibility, that age, yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one there. Uh, we'll take the we'll take the smiles and the love, and we'll take the super sticker, hey. Manny. Thank you, man. Come Fine. on, I don't want to give him that. That's another two fifty for me. <laughs> thank you for the super chat we normally don't get super chats thank you very that's much very nice that. of you guys yeah <laughs> i hope you give these super chats on janet's channel uh thank you manny uh you're welcome he says and now we're nice. about, i just uh have backup plan, backup plan uh, new american language okay always gonna have a backup plan. always have a backup that Let's snake see. bite joke is an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, it's old, of course. Where did, I haven't been back to the States to get any new ones. I think we might have reached the end, guys. And here's Thomas. Uh, that snake bite, old and goodie. All right, that's the last of the comment. I'm so sorry if we missed anybody. Didn't mean to go over, but we're way over our time limit here. Chad has things to do. And uh, oh, yeah, no, this has been a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on the thanks channel, for man. On. My first live stream. Yeah, thanks a lot. Well, we just got some big, big money come in. Big, Wayne, Wayne, Holy super sticker, twenty bucks. Riskies. Oh my lord! Now, rain at the. You were about to turn the stream off. Coffee. Thank you, Wayne. I have to go and go to the bank now and get money for the chat. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. All kidding aside, thank you so much. So generous of you. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thank you so much guys Kelly I caught you late good day all thanks guys thanks for tuning in better late than never if I missed something put it in the comment section and Chad and I will take a look at it later when we have time 
and we will answer them in the comments section. This has been fun. I need to do a live stream. I've never done live streams. You try, Chad. Have you guys on my channel. Enjoy. I'll try it. Leave a comment. Should Chad do a live stream when he's traveling? Like the regular guy. Right? Yeah, I know. I'm like the only uh, blogger that hasn't done them. Yeah, but you're going to do it right. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks to everybody. We're ending Thanks, this. Everyone.